She's all you'd ever want. She's the kind they like to flaunt. She's your mother. Mm, uh, all right. Na, 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 na. Wow. She always knows her place. She's got style. <laughs> She's got grace. She's your mother. <laughs> all right. For the for the audio listener, Danny's holding up a picture of his mom right now. That's right. I love also you, the mom. nicest things you've ever said about our mothers. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, they do know their place. I will say that. Wow. wow. And so do I. And we're back. Welcome back to Uninformed <laughs> Movie Reviews, number fifty one. Number fifty one. We're talking about mama movies, Mother's Day movies. <laughs> for moms yeah right oh yeah well Got movies that. for moms movies about moms for yeah. moms movies not about similar moms. to movies about dads for dads yes nice the guys always got to take it first you know what i mean mm. sucks yeah. we were really just bad sons last year <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we're stepping up our son game and we are paying tribute to the mothers that's right it's a movie quest frank what's movie quest uh, you're, are you referring to our our quest for our favorite movie to find out? F- <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that. <laughs> our quest to find out what our favorite movie of all time is. Obviously, there are movies that haven't come out yet or movies that have come out that we just haven't gotten around to seeing. That's yeah, good. Well you said. only missed up until this point, right? Oh, yeah. shoot. I did miss up until this oh, point. Oh, man. It's I'm, a hard one to stick. Yeah. You didn't even try, so. We all got brains that only moms could love right now. There you go. But, sure. Hey, thanks for listening. We uh, check out, like, share, and subscribe our stuff. Before we get going, mm. hit us up at Instagram on Uninformed Movie Reviews. We got some quality content coming out right now. Uh, we got <laughs> Doctor Strange. Nice, nice choice going on here. <laughs> yeah, okay. We got Doctor Strange coming out soon. Um, what else is hitting up? Studio 666 whoa, we whoa, got whoa. coming out, right? Or am I, am I in the, the past? Formula. You're messing up the formula here, man. <laughs> um, yeah, we have Doctor Strange this week. Then we got... Uh, Oh, my goodness. The next podcast is uh, Bong Joon Ho oh, man. movie ranking. Very wow. exciting. Then Studio 666. And then after that, Ozark is our podcast Yeehaw. talking about the entire series, which just so you all know, I've seen one episode and Frank's seen four. Is that <laughs> these guys said? got some watching to do. Yeah. these uh, All these announcements might get you very excited to view our top quality content while uh, I'm feeling pretty stressed out over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of show to watch, man. Oh, yeah, dude. But you know what? It's, uh, it's a good show so far. Oh, yeah. Fantastic show. So far, and it so only good. gets better. Um, so why don't we... Uh, why don't we kick it off? Uh, let's let's give it to David over here. Why don't you give oh. us your runner up? Wow. Okay. So, uh, runner up movies uh, for moms about moms. Just like the the Father's Day episode that we did. Uh, in that episode, I just asked my dad, Dad, give me two movies about dads. <laughs> okay, which one do you want first? Wait, but this is atypical because your mom is an atypical woman. This is true. She. Uh, I think we had a we had an episode where we were talking about movies that our moms like. It wasn't the full episode, but. Yeah, it was oh, something. What we it got was is it. on the father's episode, the movies that you guys had picked were movies that my mom would be super into. That's, That's what true. happened. Yeah. Was it like Con Air or something? Like, I think Frank had Sharknado on there for some reason. <laughs> did you no, really have Sharknado? I definitely did do Sharknado. It, it got brought up. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't remember what the conversation was. But anyway, a shout out to that episode. Go check it out. Um, except we won't shout out dads on the mom episode. No, don't be rude. <laughs> um, so I asked my mom, yeah, hey, mom, give me two movies about being a mom. And she just was very quick in her response. And then I was like, you know what? I am going to rank them this time. And although I don't think this is as good as my number one, it's it's not as motherly as my number one pick. Okay. So my runner up for today is 1960s Psycho. All right. Quality mom movie. Yeah, I know. I was pretty excited. When she said Psycho, I was like, ah. I think my mom and I, I got a lot of my movie taste from my mom. I can see that. Same. Yeah. Yeah, same here. This is the uh, the proto slasher movie, man. This is like the this the is, OG uh, proto Jason, yeah. Well, even the score is which is which is something that, you know, I want to talk about right away is that Bernard Herman score, which you get the famous, you know, stabbing scene which was originally intended to be a silent scene until Hitchcock heard the score and was like, this is this is it. This is what we've come for. But it's also got that great you know how movies used to have a credit scene where it was literally just like text, yeah, and yeah. then music, and that was that was the intro. Uh, man, but then Monty Python came and changed the game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the psycho, the psycho score is fantastic though, and you can hear how it is like Friday the Thirteenth. It inspired a ton of horror movies. Very iconic. It's also like. only using string instruments. Yeah, the score is just a, a string orchestra. It's great. It's uh, it's like 
Yeah, Psycho really set the precedent with all of like the straight up slasher shot. So much so that it's even present in like movies today, like Studio Six Six Six. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, okay, interesting. Yeah. I haven't watched. But you know what I mean, right? The knife shot. Oh, the knife before shot before yeah. the stab. It's always just the still shot of the knife in hand. Yeah. You Halloween. know what? I actually for one of my picks, I have like a reverse of the knife shot. It's like after mm. the scare. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'm curious to see what you have there. Um, this is also a genre bending movie, which I thought was kind of funny because we we Ooh. had just started. Uh, you know, we did that episode just a few. Two episodes ago. Yeah, we should have had your mom on. Yep. Well, she wasn't available. But oh, um, it was a it was a um, you know a movie that starts off as kind of like a thriller. It's like this woman is is robbing her boss essentially, uh, is is getting a bunch of money and then you know heading for the hills, and instead like it turns into this you know horror movie. Which yeah, I feel bad about spoiling Psycho because you know, Hitchcock was ah. trying so hard not to. But. People have had so long to watch it. It's been out for, yeah. for what seventy? Eight, uh, I'm not good at math. 60, 70 years. Sixty two years. Sixty two. Yeah, oh, that, man. I mean, I, that's a long time. A lot less than I thought it was. Um, I gotta say on my rewatch, this is just such a timeless classic. Uh, there's something about a Hitchcock movie where the dialogue doesn't feel antiquated it doesn't feel like it's got that old timey acting ah, no. citizen kane style it, yeah it feels just very real the only thing that's going to give it away is like the 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 wardrobe and oh, yeah. like the stylization of the house and the cars yeah of course yeah but uh they feel like real people where i think some older movies don't always feel that way um so yeah i think i think that's uh, just something that um that's always stuck with me about hitchcock uh i love it which actually here we go into Hitchcock fun fact. I'm excited this is episode 51 because this is Hitchcock's 51st movie. Wow. Hey, uh, wow. Yeah, man. The man has 59 films. They have 50, 51 first movies. <laughs> so our favorite 51st movies. Would some say he really didn't hit his stride until like the 50th? <laughs> man. I mean, it's kind of crazy, right? It's kind of crazy to think about. I mean, with his earliest movies being in 1920. Yikes. And then Psycho coming out in 1960. So what I'm hearing is we're Hitchcock ranking off the table. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, man, we're watching Ozark right now. Why not just hit the Hitchcock? Three-parter. <laughs> I might have to have an objection to that one. <laughs> well, it's actually interesting, too, because I learned some stuff about Hitchcock. Like, first off, the man never won an Oscar for Best Director. Crazy. Wow. Which seems criminal. Also, he's got one movie called The Mountain Eagle that's literally lost to time. Every print of it has been huh. destroyed. So we couldn't even definitively rank all of them because huh. there, there's... I mean, some of them are just like going to be very hard to find, especially this one, which is literally impossible to. Damn, so, and that, that sucks because I'm intrigued because you say mountain eagle and I'm picturing some Griffin-esque uh, <laughs> creature, you know what I mean? Mm. Like a, a, a mountain lion with, with eagle feathers. See, when I hear mountain eagle, I immediately think like Nazis. Like I was thinking, nest. yeah, the eagle's oh, nest, yeah. yeah but that, that is also sense. fun. Yeah. You know, I feel like mine was less fascist, so I'm going <laughs> to stick with that. Uh, Hitler, all, or Hitler, uh, Hitchcock also <laughs> did a World Freudian War II documentary. There. He did a World War II documentary on concentration camps during the 40s. How crazy. He like sent a camera crew to film it then in the 1940s uh, to capture the horror of the concentration camps. And so this were, had to be like towards the end of the war then, yeah. right? And they were going to release it to German audiences and they were like, you know what? These people are like, they're beaten. Like, let's not do it. Something tells me they're going to pay enough for this after this war is done. <laughs> I guess. Or that they won't have enough to buy a movie ticket. So they, uh, yeah, the the movie wasn't even shown until the 1980s uh, until it was like broadcast on TV. Wow. I'm very curious. I, I definitely want to see it. It's called M- Memories of, of the Camp or something like that. Ah, um, so it's not that movie Life is Beautiful? No, 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 no. That's uh, what's his name? Bellini? No, I can't think of his name. Anyway, back to Psycho. So the movie starts off with the you know our our, our protagonist uh, quotation marks <laughs> who is stealing money. Uh, and and to put it in perspective, I thought this was interesting. Uh, the character's name is Mary, and she stole forty thousand dollars in nineteen sixty. That's hey, a lot of money. That's, that's like, a lot of money. That's like almost a million dollars. Well, it's in the modern day equivalent, it's three hundred fifty-two thousand dollars. Wow. Um, and then imagine the movie, if she had invested that into some bonds or some Bitcoin. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> she, she also, uh, there's a scene in the movie where she's trying to, you know, not be tracked so easily. So she sells her car to buy a different car. She Why? takes the, uh, the SIM card out of her cell phone and crushes it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so curiously. She, she forgot that step. She pays a measly $200 for a new car. <laughs> well, she, she sells her car for, uh, she pays the $700 difference when trading in her car for a new car. 
which in today's equivalent is six thousand one hundred dollars. Still not bad. Interesting. Still, still pretty not good trade. Bad. Um, in today's used car market, <laughs> that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good, good deal. Six thousand dollars without uh, Carvana. Without. Mm. She wasn't buying a Tesla. I'll tell you that much. Um, but sure. yeah, so that, that's how it starts off. I thought. I thought also this is. I caught it this time. I don't know if I ever caught it before. When she's leaving town originally, she's at a stoplight and a, and crossing the street is her boss who sees her and is like, you're not supposed to be here. And then she and drives Pulp, off. Pulp Fiction moment? Exactly, yeah. man. Yeah. I was like, oh, wow. This is this is where Tarantino <laughs> stole it from. Yeah. Ving Rhames holding the coffee and the donuts. Um, I never caught that before. That's awesome. Yeah. It was, that it, is cool. It, it's, it's almost exactly the same shot. It's really funny. Um one of the things I just thought was interesting, so, so like to fast forward, you know, she goes to the Bates Motel, she's hiding out one night, she's trying to plan her next move, and this is when the movie just turns, because Norman Bates isn't just the hotel manager, he's a psycho. Uh, hey. And then uh, he's, kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's spying on her in a peephole, like looking at her through the restroom. As you do. As you do. And so this is a very voyeuristic shot. Uh, something that again is going to be used in slasher movies for years to come. And Hitchcock, this is the technical way he did it. He's filming this in 35 millimeter and he uses a 50 millimeter lens on his camera, which apparently is the closest way to approximate the vision of a human eye. Interesting. Huh. So that the audience is made a voyeur along with Norman Bates. Nice. Yeah, it's a cool movie. Nice. Man. So I don't know. This is such a monumental horror movie. And I think, I think the, uh, you know, the twist is just so shocking. Like, uh, I mean, if you have like a little kid, I guess it'd be kind of a cool horror movie to watch. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. Cause it's not like gory or anything. No. You know and, what I mean? And, and like, the famous knife scene is actually mostly, uh, not shown the yeah. violence. Uh, there's a little bit of nudity in it. Um, a little but bit of nudity is not going to hurt you. It's not going to hurt you. Let's stop being such uh knives will hurt you. Prudish knives Americans. will hurt you. Knives yeah. Knives will hurt you, will hurt you yeah. for sure. Um, don't bathe with knives. Yeah, I love the movie. I also love how like um, the money is is lost. I think that's a, such a nice touch that that uh, they 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 don't find the money at the end of the movie. That it's that's got like gone. a uh, the killing ending. Yes, 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 yes. Um, kind of like strangely poetic, but love Psycho. We gotta remember the the mom component of it. Mm. That Norman Bates is completely. He's the mama's boy. He is his mama's boy. Yeah, so much so that his mom is dead and he's still the mama's boy. It is proto Jason, and of, but reverse at the same time. Of course, we got that. Also, we have that Bates Motel show, which explores that dynamic. Oh, which, yeah. Did you watch that? You know, Did I you remember like I watched the first like five or six episodes and I just I just fell out of it. Guys, it's a hard pass. I watched like really? the first season, maybe part of the second season. Yeah. And it's like, like you talk about uh, Cycle being timeless, but like they still do. The like 50s, 60s aesthetic, but everybody has like cell phones it's and very like modern loose. cars. Oh, yeah. it, like, it, it, it pissed me off yeah. like the whole time. It's like a Bridgerton situation. It's yeah, like that yeah. movie Brick uh, <laughs> that we were talking about in the long ago. It's like a weird kind of mix. And and um, it's also just like, I, now I'll be honest, I haven't really watched the show Gotham. I saw one episode of it and decided, nah. why do I want to watch a Batman show that doesn't have Batman? And yeah. that's essentially what that show felt like to me. I don't want to watch an Alfred show either. Oh, yeah. A Pennyworth show or whatever. Why? So dumb. Because we're out of ideas. Yeah. We're scraping the bottom. Just do a Batman TV show. Why not? What's the what's <laughs> Just the get harm? another Batman. <laughs> yeah, why not? We have a 17 Jokers. Hit one more Batman. What's I the big deal? Know, let's calm down on the Batman. <laughs> I think you're batman out, are you? Yeah. Well, that's all I got for Psycho. Which way are we going next, Danny? Well, Psycho, what an oh. artistic journey Ooh. is hard to quantify in words, so why not quantify it into numbers? Uh, mm. Psycho... With its uh, 109 minute runtime, uh, has an 8.5 out of 10 on IMDb and a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh, wow, that's a high one. Uh, made on an old timey budget with old timey uh, clams. Let's made on ten dollars. <laughs> um, oh my god, a budget of eight hundred and six thousand nine hundred forty-seven dollars estimated. If you're going to estimate a budget then. too, that's why not true. round that's it up? That's a lot. Well, to put it into perspective too, Hitchcock had been doing some huge blockbusters like North by Northwest, like these giant budget movies, did filming the, at Mount Rushmore. Did the Birds come out before this? No, Birds is actually the movie that follows this. Mm. He, you know what? Just Birds. Drop the the. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he he wanted to do a, a more like independent style movie. He wanted to get away from the big blockbuster kind of thing. And uh, the studios didn't even want to give him money because they were like, this is offensive material. This is... This is pornography. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Hitchcock 
uh, did some of the financing himself, but he also, as we're about to find out, uh, made a ton of money off this movie because well, he, he made most of the profit himself. Yeah, uh, a buttload even. A buttload uh, of 32 money. $32 wow. oh, wow. <laughs> In the 60s? Yeah, yeah man. Dude. Well, I think if it's worldwide gross, that's still going on today, right? Yeah, that's like yeah. currently, as of today, Psycho has made that much money. Yeah. What was the box o- U.S. box office? Uh, so they don't have like an oh, opening okay. weekend or okay. anything. It's just like U.S. box office, thirty-two million, and they Ooh. got the other forty-one thousand nine hundred thirty-one dollars from like Japan. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Who knows? Not U.S. Not U.S. Okay. Canada, wow. perhaps. How exciting! I mean, that that's a exponential amount of money through time. Yeah, this is his biggest uh, box office success. Continues Psycho. to be quite successful. Yes. Crazy. Good choice. Good choice. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and steal the next one. Oh, wow. Unprecedented. I'm kicking like it. it on over counterclockwise from me. Went clockwise to you. Now we're coming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Classic uh, Danny. Classic Danny. <laughs> so for my, fir- my runner up, if you will, my not number one, I have chosen 2013's Mama. Nice. I, I had actually mm. considered this one. Did you? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, directed and co-written by Andy Muschietti. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> famous, Offensive. Famous Offensive. from It. I wasn't offended at all. I quite enjoyed <laughs> it. And that's all that matters. The World War II rule, David. Just always remember the World War II rule. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Now that's classic. Yeah. <laughs> so this is actually his directorial debut and based on his original uh, 2008 um, Argentinian short film, Mama. So I guess it was based on hmm. a story that he created. It was Argentinian, before. so it's Mama. 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 Is this produced by Del Toro? I believe so. There is. He does have something to do with it, and I can't really. I can't remember. What, I thought he had directed it. He was just there. He I just thought it was out. him too. You know, for a minute. Mm-hmm. Um, it does star uh, old Jamie Lannister, Nikolai Coster Waldau, and Jessica the Chess Chastain. And wow, <laughs> man, that might be Jesus. some of the best work you've ever done. Jesus Christ! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't know if I would call that best work. <laughs> I would. That was pretty, pretty good. Uh, f- uh, for those of you who have not seen Mama, um, the basic plot is that um, after a young couple take their t- take in their two niece two nieces, because uh, the uncle's their father, who is their uncle's brother, they're identical twins. Their uh, father, their uncle's brother. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little confusing. Okay. Oh, they, I'm God. glad you explained to uh, the audience how uh, <laughs> uncles work. Oh, uncles work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nikolai Coster Waldau has a twin who is the girl's father. Um, he kills himself because of the financial crisis in 2008, leaving them alone in, the, in a shed in the middle of nowhere. And they grow up in the wild and they're brought up by this malicious spirit that watches over them fiercely. Um, and so when the other Jamie Lannister comes in to take him in with the Chastain, um, <laughs> they, uh, they start noticing weird stuff happening and the, the spirit becomes very vengeful and they have to figure out why. Hey, what's uh, well, what's the deal with the ghost mom? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I've actually, I've never seen this movie. Really? Oh, that's pretty no, good. I, I skipped out movie. on it when it came out. Like the, they do a good job with like the mom ghost, the, the little feral girls like do a really good job mm-hmm. of like being feral. Yeah. Oh, okay. Especially the very young one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Guillermo del Toro did produce this. Executive producer. Yeah. Did produce it. Don't know if he was executive producer. But he, he was. I, I checked while you were talking. Oh. Yeah. Um, Frank, hit me with those numbers. You got it, dude. Uh, made on a budget of fifteen million dollars, uh, it would gross one hundred forty-six point four million dollars. Uh, it's currently has a sixty-three percent Rotten Tomato score uh, with a six point two out of ten on IMDb. Wow, mm. that's wow, a, that's a little low, but that's not too bad. Yeah, it is a low. It's below the Final Fantasy Spirits Within bar, which is interesting. <laughs> and Face Off, yeah, um, way below Face Off, below the Face Off <laughs> parameter. Um, yeah, I mean, I think as far as being on the horror scale, which we usually drop about 15% off of the score normally because it's a horror movie. Yeah, I would there's say. a curve for yeah, horror. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a curve for horror. Uh, I honestly think it's a great watch. Uh, I feel like anyone could really at least see some joy in this movie. It's got some good Not scares. Not the blind, Danny. <laughs> That's true. You have to be aware of that. What is happening today? I don't know. It's, um, it's, Wow. There's some decent scares. I'm blaming it on the Dutch bros, not a sponsor. <laughs> but please hit us up. Uh, great set design. Uh, the m- mama herself 
pretty creepy. Good sound effects. Um, decent acting, hmm. I think, honestly. Uh, but I like the story. It's nice. It's a nice little contained little story that kind of branches out just a bit before it ends. And that's it. It doesn't go on too long. Little, what is it? 90 minute runtime? Was it 100 minutes? Wow. Nice and concise. Oh, nice and tight. Nice and tight. Yeah, 90s. 90s good. Yeah, is, 90s is a good spot. Is your mama also a fan of the horror movies? She loves horror movies. Nice. Absolutely loves it. She's showed nice. me a lot of horror movies. Actually, I remember one of the first horror movies we went to go see was Sleepy Hollow with mm, Johnny Depp. Ah, yeah, that's a fun one. And I got terrified. And I like... I What's like, Johnny Depp up to these days? I haven't seen him anything in a while. I'm not He's doing much. He's busy. He's really? Busy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well... Mostly putting up with lawyers. <laughs> Yeah, trying yeah. to avoid having poop on his bed. Wow, that's a very particular problem to have. Yeah. Probably working on a new Pirates of the Caribbean movie or something. No, I think he said he'll never do another one. You Smart. think so? Well, he said it in the in, in the, the hearing. <laughs> and, and I think just to have it like on oath. record. Yeah. Well, because I mean they're exposing him as being just such a drunk, you know what I mean? He's like, I can't play such an intoxicated role. I'm assuming. But that's hearsay. No so. one lies under oath, David. That's, I mean, yeah, pure. Except Marjorie Taylor Green. Hey, <laughs> perjury, perjury. Got her, got her, got her. Anyways. Uh, Anyways, this is a fun movie. Hmm. Um, Yeah, the, the, the story uh, goes into like the, the ghost's past and kind of makes it so that she's not just one dimensional scary ghost oh, wanting okay. death. That's so, fun. That's fun. Yeah. And it, uh, it shows a bit about the mom spirit transcending time, looking for her own dead baby. A little La Llorona esque. I was gonna say it's almost like an Appalachian La Llorona. Yeah. Oh, okay. The woman in white. Yeah. Yeah. The wailing woman. <gasps> Mis niños. <laughs> but yeah, that's my selection. That's my runner up. Ooh. I think. Calm it's down cool. over there. You're gonna be scaring oh, the listener. You're gonna be scaring the oh, listener with that. Pretty I'm good. So excited. Pretty good runners. Runner. Runner ups. Runners up. Runners up. Runners up. <laughs> Big up, ups. <laughs> Big ups to my runner. <laughs> so I guess it's my turn. Yeah, wow. tell us yours. Well, gentlemen, for my runner up, I have 2022s or 2020s. Oh, wow. I was like, wow, Frank's a new movie. <laughs> I know. I have 2020s. A Quiet Place Part Two. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay, that is a good bomb. Okay, movie. yeah, because yeah, it yeah. is just the mom in that. Well, one. the the fr- well, like as far mm. as the family unit, sure. like and, dad's and dead, surrogate dad. You yeah, know yeah. I mean? yeah. Is that a Killian Murphy? K- K- Killian Murphy? Yeah. yeah, a very hairy Killian Murphy. Yeah. Um, but A Quiet Place 2, the, the second installment of the Quiet Place franchise. Um, John Krasinski's dead, if, you, if you're if you familiar with the ending of the, of the first one. Um, and I wouldn't even necessarily say that Emily Blunt's character is the main character in this one, but she's such a badass in mm. this one that I would argue that it's a movie about moms for moms. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember. Is this the one that she has birth in? She has birth at the end of the quiet first place. One. Oh, at the end um, of the first one. And that's one. what makes okay. her such a badass. Because immediately after giving birth, she has to fight off these monsters. <laughs> yeah. But still, like, within an hour of, like, those events taking place, she's, like, full, like, business mode, gathering supplies, carrying, like, mm. um, what? how did I write down? Emmy Blunt is running full sprint, lugging around oxygen tanks, supplies, a baby silencing box, and a goddamn baby immediately after giving birth. And yeah. they go on, like, a several-mile hike to, like, get to safety, um, which... Uh, All with the placenta right out of it. <laughs> just dragging well, it. Well, she <laughs> ate the placenta. You got you to. to. You got yeah. to. You need nutrition. Plus, food's that, scarce. That's yeah. what happens in between the movies. <laughs> <laughs> that's the DVD commentary. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed A, a Quiet Place uh, Part 2, uh, especially on my rewatch. And I, I actually meant to go look at the character Liam McSeated to see what my opinions were, but I never did that. So if I'm contradicting myself... Nothing out of the ordinary there. I was just about to say, I don't think we ever did it. Uh, did we just do we did the first the, Quiet Place? We, no, because we did the intro, remember? Mm, it's when, oh, it's then when the pandemic we got, kept getting hit with the pandemic back, yeah, backlog. We just gave up. And it got to the point where it was like, well, this movie is now like, what are we going to talk about it for? It was a good intro, too. And then we were going to, oh, no, no, we went to go see the movie. Then we were going to use the intro, but then Brandon was in it, but then he wasn't on the channel anymore. Oh, and then it, was, and it, it turned uh, into like a, a real, me- I think we recorded reviews. Wow. But we never had another intro so it's like the lost Gosh. it's like the mountain eagle it's lost hey we'll just uh we'll, we'll keep it in the back burner we have all the files we'll use it when we start a uh patreon it sounds like <laughs> our, our quiet place intro turned into quite the mess 
God. Thank you. I'll see my way out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to double check to make sure I'm not uh, wrong here. Uh, while David's checking, might as well hit the numbers. Uh, Quiet Place Part 2 has a tight 97 minute runtime, a 7.2 out of 10 on IMDb, and a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's a little bit low on IMDb. Uh, made on an estimated budget between $55 million and $61 oh, wow. million, dollars, which is the first time I think I've ever had a range for these. Uh, had an opening weekend of forty-seven million five hundred forty-seven thousand two hundred thirty-one dollars, and would worldwide gross two hundred and ninety-seven million three hundred seventy-two thousand. That has nothing to do with not much being released hmm. that year. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> too. Yeah, Wasn't sure. this one that we watched at home? Was I'm pretty this one sure. That we yes. paid for? I'm pretty sure. I think this one was yeah. straight to on demand, right? You know, I'll just uh, we we did not. Review it. I mean, right. We we did review not officially. it, but it's not released. Yeah, it's not canon. But I will say that as you've been talking about it, I've been reflecting on a little bit more, and you know, I think the ending is a little just soured the experience a little bit for me. I think they they hit too close. Excuse me. So to the ending of the first movie again. Yeah, a little bit. The the I thoroughly enjoyed most of the ride. Um, I like the the family has to like, um, and it's so funny that it came out so close to El Camino because they have the same thing of like <laughs> the weird time, like because they oh, have the little yeah. boy at the end of the first one who's aged significantly yeah. by the time they started filming this movie, uh, and they just like don't mention it. They even do like. Uh, a before shot of like the family and the boy's like older than he is in the first movie. Is and it's supposed to be like a yeah. week It's very after, confusing. Right? Like well, it the, picks up right like after. Right after. Yeah, it picks up immediately yeah, afterwards. Right. Well, the movie starts like day one of the events, like yes. the day that the aliens show up. So that they can put John Krasinski in. Yeah, because you got to get Big John get paycheck, in there. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Big yeah. tuna. Big tuna. <laughs> Harry tuna. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the I, I enjoy like eighty percent of the movie. But when they get to the end, the uh, they they they're split off into two teams essentially. Well, three teams for a second, and then they it, it ends up being Emily Blunt, the the oldest son, and then the brand new baby, and then um, man, I forgot the name of the character, but the deaf girl um, yeah. who's one bad mother herself, uh, and uh, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> yeah, I like that, yeah, killing it, good killing justification, it, killing it, killing it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they, they, at the end of the movie during like the climax and the resolution, they have both groups hitting the same notes, like at the same time in the movie, which is a pacing issue for me. Uh, Mm -hmm. I understand why they did it so that they, but I I felt like it would have benefited from spreading out the drama. They could have this happen here while they were traveling. And then while these people are kind of settled, you have going down over here on the other side. Um, and there's, uh, some more interesting aspects. They run into like another group of survivors who have some crazy disease and they, they're essentially like yeah. the Bayou boys that you have oh, yeah, in like yeah. the, like it made me think of, uh, yeah, Left like the dead, swamp right? in, yeah. uh, in, uh, Red Dead Redemption. It, it, oh, it yeah, felt that's like it. a walking dead episode for a yeah. second. It hits yeah, this definitely. really weird kind of turn. Yeah. But it's an interesting scene. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. Um, but that pacing at the end is like initially going into this, I thought it was going to be my number one. Yeah. I had to demote it down to uh, my runner up, especially after I watched what ended up being my number one spot. Oh, what a tease. Uh, but what still tease. can't recommend like a quiet place and a quiet place to enough. We'll see if they drop the ball on number three. They might what are they doing three. They're doing three. They, they are. Oh, wow. Yeah. I bet like <laughs> how soft it got towards the end. I'm referring to myself off obviously. Um, I don't think three will will be pulled off successfully. Um, I'm saying it here. Do you think now, they'll still have it. a tuna prequel? Oh yeah, they'll get like tuna a, a in there. A tuna somehow. scene in there somehow. I'll be honest, I think you gotta you gotta switch it up at this point. A like different follow family? another family? You, yeah, you need to follow another so. family and you need to go like back like, to a uh, deaf the family. <laughs> no, you can you can drop the death thing for a little bit. You could just hit like uh, they could day go, one day one outbreak movie kind of thing. Yeah, they could do that, they or they could that. follow because um, they they besides the I'm just gonna keep calling them the Bayou Boys because I like the way it sounds. Mm-hmm. But besides them, they also find like a peaceful community who like have banded together mm-hmm. on like an island. It's like the whole plot to the movie. Love that. They hear a song playing on the radio, and it's like uh, somewhere over the sea. Um, somewhere, yeah, oh. beyond the sea. My love will stand on. Uh, but they could follow that community, you know what I mean? Or go like day one. Um, but if they try to just follow the same family again, it's going to it's gonna blow. It's just going to fall flat. Yeah. A little too far. Yeah. 
or someone's got to die. Uh, one, lastly, the the thing I really appreciated about this one, like I love the intensity that you get with like everything having to be quiet, like in the first movie. They play on the death death thing a whole lot more. Like they they block everything out and when it's just thing. focused on the the oldest daughter. They they cut out all the audio, and then when you go back to another person's perspective, you have like the insects and the ambient and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of she she goes off on her own for part of this movie, and you get like how dangerous it is, like being in a world where you can't make a sound where you can't tell how much sound you're making or what yeah, sounds are around yeah. you. Um, it raises the stakes a little bit. Yeah. No one brings up farts. Yeah. Why not just up farts? Actually, I'm pretty sure Brandon did. Oh, he did. did. He? Yeah. Why not just build a house at the waterfall? Why didn't you build a house near the <laughs> goddamn waterfall? <laughs> or in the waterfall. Yeah. Wow. Great choice, Frank. Great choice. I thought it was pretty good too, David. I think it's okay. Wow. Well, well, appreciate your candor. It's definitely a runner up. Here's my uh, <laughs> here's my number one, a movie that I had never seen before, never heard of before, and Michelle is shocked because apparently this is like a very well-known movie. 1998's Stepmom. Dude. Oh, I was going to go with Stepmom. Stepmom's good with Julia yeah. Roberts. Julia Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. Sarandon. 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 Ha, ain't, ain't no valley low. low. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I was like, why are they using all the 70s music in this movie? I was like, oh... They're doing like the equivalent of like Nirvana being in the new Batman movie. Uh, it's just that we're old now. You know what I mean? Dude. Yep. It's like why Dr. Dre played the halftime show. <laughs> they're, they're, they're setting you up, man. It's, yeah. it's, it's giving you like getting ready for that alley-oop of sadness yeah. for like midway through the movie. Oh, yeah. It's Damn. like, oh, you think you like Susan Sarandon, huh? Shepada, shepada, shepada. Wow. <laughs> alley-oop alley for sadness is my favorite phrase that I've heard this week so far. Yeah, that's a good one. You got a Scotty Pippen and into straight depression. So, uh, <laughs> Stepmom 1998, we got directed by our boy, Chris Columbus. Hey, 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 not the bad one. Uh, no, no, no. Not okay. the genocider. Not the genocider. Uh, Home Alone's not to be confused. Chris Columbus. Not yeah. Chris Ball Colon. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Chris Columbus. Uh, in his second movie about a divorced family, can anyone give me the first one? Harry Potter? Uh, <laughs> no, that's a dead family. <laughs> divorced from life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the man has points. You'd be pretty liberal with that word divorced. Uh, is it Santa Claus? Are they divorced in the Santa Claus? Yeah, uh, I think they are, did, but did I don't think that's Chris Columbus. Columbus. <laughs> Isn't Santa it? Claus? It feels like a Christopher it's Columbus movie. Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, <laughs> Who knew? Uh, John Williams score, which, you know, for Bernard Herrmann, killing such a pivotal score in Psycho. Wait a John Williams score is just like... John Williams did the score in Stepmom? Yeah, it's just kind of forgettable. I mean, it's good. I remember watching the movie and seeing his name show up and being like, ooh, I'm excited. What's going to happen? And I was like, oh, okay, this is nothing special. Uh, The Santa Claus. Yeah. Was directed by John Pasquin. Ah, uh, see, I thought it was Tim Allen. Don't know who that um, is. Frank, would you want to hit those numbers? Oh, Miss Congeniality 2. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, stepmom. I'm sorry. Wow. He also did Home Improvement. No. Chris yeah. Columbus? No, John no, Pasquin. Pasquin. Oh. Right when you said uh-huh. it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is weird. Let's one more. Uh, okay, so, go ahead. So Stepmom with its 125-minute runtime. And honestly, thinking back on it, I don't feel like you feel the length. I feel like it, it's no. super solid. Uh, released in 1998, as David said, currently has a 6.8 out of 10 on IMDb, a 46% on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, that's rotten in itself. Uh, I can't believe that, it. I, that's what's that Rotten Tomatoes score again? Way too 46. low. 46. Whoa. 46. That's way too low. I man. will say that there are... <sighs> There are parts in this movie where it feels like a little too hammy. Well, there's a lot of redheads in this movie. <laughs> what? There's like two of them, right? <laughs> Other two? That's two too many. I guess. I did not what I was getting at. Does that lower the score? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and there are some parts that are maybe a little too corny, but still, that's I mean, too low. But that's the type of movie. It's a tearjerker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is. But I it's, know. you know... It's not it's not cinema. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. A film. A film. <laughs> Capital F film. Uh made on a budget of fifty million dollars. All of it was Susan Saran. <laughs> For reals though. <laughs> Maybe though. Had an opening weekend of uh, ninety million one hundred and forty two thousand four hundred and forty dollars. Would and would go on to worldwide wow. gross a hundred and fifty nine yeah. million mm. seven hundred ten thousand mm. seven hundred ninety three dollars was quite large when I was a kid. Like this was like all. And the- what, how how big is it now? About the same. I size, doubt anyone. A little bit smaller. Still, <laughs> I doubt anyone remembers this movie. Really like, I doubt anyone uh, under 
28 remembers this yeah, movie. Fair enough. You know, you mean? know, fair enough. I don't know if this is a movie that's going to... That pervades, like, yeah. that just goes through time. And boy, or something's dated. Don't worry, I'll get into it. Oh, do tell. Yeah. Well, first off, I just wanted to go over our cast here. We got Julia Roberts as the young stepmom, which, I mean, <laughs> she's looking good. She's a photographer in this, this movie. Peak Julia Roberts. Here's to make you guys feel old. Do Julia it. Roberts... Is the same age as us in this movie. She's Whoa. 31 years old. Wow. Whoa. We could be the stepmoms, guys. I was gonna say, and I've never married like a, a divorced man before. No, but you could, dog. I could. And Emma Roberts is almost as old now. <sighs> Emma Roberts, stepmom two, back in the habit. <laughs> uh Ed Harris, who's the who plays the dad who works too much. I love Ed Harris. He's a lawyer. If you're not, you know, if you're not, if you're his faces and showing up in your head while hearing the name he's the uh the uh, director in uh, truman show that's the last time Love we saw him. him on the channel yeah ed harris is, is he wearing a kangol hat and uh stepmom you know, unfortunately no ah. he's 48 in this movie whoa so you know Still 17 bald. year difference yeah but you know as far as like you know your divorced dad looking for the younger mom 31 17 year difference i mean good for ed harris as long as he didn't know her already this is a win. like if he knew yeah. her as a small child as long as he's not <laughs> indiana jonesing her creepy we're indiana getting into Jones. some dangerous territory here. then we got susan sarandon who plays super mom uh she's you know the mom who can do it all she she's an author in this movie where's sandal blanket Y'all, stuff S- susan you know? sarandon is older than ed harris she's 52 mm-hmm. at the time of this movie Still looking great, man. Always. Susan Sarandon. Whew. Talking about that Rocky Horror Picture Show, Susan <sighs> Sarandon. <laughs> hey now. Hey now. Ooh. That's right. Let's calm down, everybody. Um, okay, first off, uh, a staple of Christopher Columbus, but y'all, you got to watch this movie just to see how swanky this apartment is that Ed Harris has. I mean, this guy is living in like uh, like a $40 million apartment or something. Just like in Home Alone where you're like, how? How do they afford this house? Yeah, it's, ev- <laughs> it's like every John Hughes movie. It's like, how, how, who, what do they do? You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, this one, you know what they do, but. I'm pretty sure the dad in Home Alone's a lawyer. I don't think they ever say. I thought he had an import export business, but Does he was he? thinking about dropping the importing, importing. to Focusing focus on more the on the exporting. exporting. Oh yeah. yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> wow. Um so maybe it, he's like an immigration lawyer. Yeah. I had a really weird <laughs> experience in this movie, so uh and I'm also realizing that at this point this hasn't been talked about on the channel at all. But Michelle, my wife and I, we're having twins. Yeah. At the time this podcast comes out, she'll be twenty weeks. Darn. So we'll be halfway through the uh the pregnancy quite pregnant super pregnant i would say twice as pregnant as the normal Um, pregnancy one of the things that i've been uh yeah for reals one of the things that i've been doing is uh well and actually before i even get into that what's even crazier is when we saw the northman he at that time we only knew the gender of one baby we knew one was a boy yes and we weren't sure what the gender the other one was and in the north the other baby hadn't decided yet yeah uh and, and maybe they still haven't in the northman it's revealed that he's having twins and that it's a boy and a girl. And in the theater we're watching and I was like, is this an omen? Is this like a sign that it's going to be one of each? Is it Odin trying to tell us? (laughs) Maybe we need to name the baby Odin. I don't know. I think so. Name him Omelet. (laughs) Odin and Freya. Those are only or maybe literally the brotherless. (laughs) Yeah. The brotherless. Well, no, they will have a brother. Um, No, no, no. You named the boy. Well, the the boy, the boy, (laughs) maybe though. Um, but anyways, one of the things I've been doing is buying books, like buying children's books. You know what I mean? So I was at Savers and I bought a book called The Stinky Cheese Man, nice. which I don't know if you guys remember. I am the stinky familiar cheese with man. The Stinky I Cheese do not. Man. I had it when I was a kid. I saw it at Savers. I was like, this is a hilarious book. I'm going to buy this for sure. So I buy Stinky Cheese Man. And what I've been doing was I was building shelves for the nursery. I had extra wood. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay, you remember this book? Yeah. yeah, this is a big 90s book. I didn't want to spend the $60 on Amazon to buy three shelves, and I had wood, and I was like, let me just go ahead and build it myself. So I build these shelves for the Stinky Cheese Man and other books, and I'm in my shed making the shelf. I'm literally applying the finish, and I have Stepmom on my phone. I'm standing in my shed working for a couple hours watching Stepmom. And while I'm watching Stepmom, they're reading a book, and the book is The, the Stinky, Stinky Cheese, Cheese Man. Man. Whoa, it yeah. was so weird, man. Whoa, ain't it, no valley. Yeah. <laughs> it was a weird experience, dude. But I just thought it was just so crazy. Um, 
Oh, now I know. And I'm now aware that Danny likes this movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's seen it. Yeah. But made man, me cry when I was young. It made me think of Danny because this is a spite movie. Susan Sarandon yeah, is, it is like on high Woo! level pettiness in this movie. She is movie. just trying to knock that girl off a pedestal. Man. For sure. <laughs> I mean, for the first whole part of the movie. And there's a scene where Julie Roberts, she's having a tough time connecting with uh, Jenna Malone, who's the daughter. Oh, wow. She's only 14 in this movie. That's cool. Crazy. Taught me what snowballing is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's a great, that's a great line in this movie. Jenna Malone is also hilarious and like a really good actress in this movie. It's like her best performance ever. Um, Way better than Sucker Punch. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, and better than Donnie Darko. She just dies in that movie. Yeah. So, um, anyways, there's a scene where Julia Roberts, Nerd. who's like the hot, hip, young, you know, young lady, young woman, uh, independent woman, she's trying to connect with Jenna Malone, who doesn't like her because she's tearing the family apart so, fair enough yeah right <laughs> I mean, so then obviously you know she she's she's like as the young one is like i want to take her to a concert and do you guys remember what band that she's thinking <gasps> about they were gonna go see pearl jam, pearl jam. Sorry. darn yeah. i was thinking chumbawamba no. yeah. <laughs> i was like dang like and in the movie she's supposed to be 12 i'm like yeah Remember when 12-year-old girls would have wanted to go to a Pearl Jam concert? How weird is this? Felt super dated. So anyways, one of my favorite petty scenes in the movie is Julie Roberts asking Susan Sarandon, well, I was thinking about taking her to see Pearl Jam. I just thought it'd be something we could connect over. And she was like, you want to take her to a rock concert? Do you know what kind of people are going to be there? On Thursday, on a school night, you want to take her to see a rock concert? And then she's like, oh my gosh, like, I'm sorry. Ah, don't be so prejudiced. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of doctors and lawyers and business executives. <laughs> well, in the next scene, it's like Susan Sarandon swoops in and buys the Pearl Jam tickets and surprises her daughter. She's like, oh my God, mom, I'm so excited. Now that is a Danny like, move. Ooh. And, then, and then she hits Julia Roberts with a thanks for the idea. Ooh. I was like, oh man. Just to be like, yes, I stole your idea <sighs> and I'll do it again too. It was great. You know I'm, what? Julia Roberts is killing it in this movie. I forgot how good she looks. Oh, she's also just like, uh, she's got a great performance. And then, yeah, you get into the sad stuff because, uh-oh, spoiler alert, Susan Sarandon's got the big C, everybody. and She's got a big C? She's going to die. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I don't remember. I don't remember seeing I the, don't remember seeing a big, her, her big C in this movie. <laughs> wow, you guys got to watch this movie again then. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> now I got a, a reason. I got another yeah. reason. <laughs> Yeah, but she's Pearl Jam, Big C. She's Man, straight Dan, Danny's gonna text you angrily tonight. He's gonna want his money back. <laughs> Towards the end of this movie, though, they they get into a like a whole like uh, <laughs> he's broken over here. <laughs> it's where things get things get a little de- things get like real sad. It gets the tearjerker part, but some of it gets a little too cheesy. You know, yeah. I don't know. It's it's on the line. But there's some there's some dialogue that's like it's it's powerful, but at the same time, it's like okay, I get what you're trying to do. But there's some stuff where Susan Sarandon's like. I was my kid's past and you'll be their future. They like accept each other, which is nice. And then she dies. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this is my cookie recipe. <laughs> <laughs> no, she kept that one. That's their last spite. Don't spite move. See Pearl Jam together. <laughs> <laughs> and then she dies. So, you know, my mom loves the sad movies. That's where I must get it from. Nice. Does she? It was a great pick. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect that. She loves the sad ones. She loves the horror movies. Wow. Loves the terrible B movies. So fried green tomatoes and Event oh, Horizon on the same day. Loves fried green tomatoes, nice, man. Dude. That could have been a choice, but not very motherly that nah. movie. But I thought, shoot, this. I mean, we this can't is, get much is, yeah. more about moms in very this movie. Mom-ish. It's about literally the role of a mother. Yep. Hey, some so, moms are lesbians, David. Hey, <laughs> not, not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, obviously, not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, Julie Roberts is so hot. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> wow, Danny, Danny, like heard Julie Roberts' name, and that's all I could think about. That's all I've been thinking about. Yeah, um, that's a great choice, David. Thank you. That's a great choice. I like well, your number one. Thank my mom. Thank your. I thank your. Thank your. Thank your, thank your, thank your mom. Thank your, thank your mom. I, I did no uh, picking myself. Did I hit numbers for stepmom? I'm pretty sure yeah, I did, you did, right? Okay. Cool. Yes. Yes. It made a lot of money. Has a that, butt ton of money. It's got that horrifying Rotten Tomato score. Yeah, I got confused. Really you like uh, you drained all the blood out of Danny and Mai's heads. <laughs> That's what I try and do. Yep. That's my that's my job. <laughs> so I guess going into my number one, uh, I actually went with 2015 Room, ah. starring Brie Larson and ah. Jacob Tremblay. Okay, can we just, real quick, let's not hit any spoilers on this, because I still haven't seen what? this movie, oh. and I'm really trying to watch it eventually. Hmm. 
I, I know what the, the after basic you watch plot. all okay. of Ozark and Bong Joon Ho's <laughs> films <laughs> and Survivor. Guys, I only have two Bong Joon Ho movies left. One of them's Parasite. I've already seen it. And I'm telling you guys, I mean, Ozark's good. I don't Bong know if it's Ho, as good man. as early Survivor. I mean, I we just started watching Survivor. I don't well, know. You don't know. You've only seen myself. one episode, David. Yeah, but after watching one episode of Survivor, I know I was in for the ride. I was like, let's do it again. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> I'm actually really excited for you. You've been petitioning to watch Survivor for yeah. a few years now. Guys, if you haven't seen the first season of Survivor since it came out in the year 2000, when this channel, like everyone on this channel was nine years old, you got to watch the first season just for how horrifically homophobic it is. Oh, I bet it's pretty, because pretty rough. One of the, like the main guys in the show, one of the, like the big com- competitors uh, it's a uh, Matt gay. Damon. <laughs> no, his name's Richard Hatch. Did you guys watch Survivor when it came out? No. Uh, yeah, I mean, Dude, like, I, I never like, watched the I show. I never watched it in serial. I remember like seeing episodes of it. No. Okay, guys, watch Survivor season one. I'm telling you. My reference beautiful. for Survivor is the episode of The Office where Michael's trying to figure out his successor and they go to the beach. Well, the craziest thing is I didn't know the show was still on. Like, it's still on today. Yeah. They're still surviving. I see the commercials for it. It's nuts. It's crazy. Nuts. Anyways, what are we talking about? What are, what's what going on? The about? room. 2015's room, not the, the no, room. The room. We're talking about Tom yeah, Rizzo's let's, the let's room. Let's talk about the room a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> You're my favorite uh, customer. <laughs> so it's directed by Lenny Abramson. Abrahamson. Abrahamson. Abramson. Um, Abraham's son. <laughs> based off of a novel uh, in 2010 by Emma Donahue. Um, of the same name, it stars Brie Larson as a young woman who has been held captive for seven years and whose five-year-old son, Jacob Tremblay, was born in captivity. Their escape allows the boy to experience the outside world for the first time. Sorry, there's a spoiler that they escape. But well, no, I, 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 got, I knew the basic premise. You yeah. know, I just hadn't got to see it. I mean, there's not really much to spoil okay. in this movie. It's, it's really, it's, you know, half of the movie is about the despair of like wanting these people to escape. You know what I mean? This boy has literally never been outside of this room, being born Eight. inside of this room. Okay. And then they escape, and you think that everything will be hunky dory after that, but then you have to deal with the trauma of being born inside of a room. The boy has to deal with his trauma, and she has to deal with her trauma, having been held captive since seventeen mm. for seven years. And uh, sounds a lot like Snowpiercer, but with less bug yeah, bricks. You know what? Well, I was thinking that dude Apt. who like kidnapped those three girls and had them like oh, underground for, yeah. don't for like nine years. No, like, no, like, like real in life. Oh, in real life. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. IRL, yeah. 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 Also in Don't Breathe. But that's crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean. Now that's a spite movie. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that it is. Um, honestly, this movie is a tearjerker without being too heavy of a tearjerker. You also got like a little bit of a survival movie out of it in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and Jacob Tremblay is awesome in this movie. I, I don't know how old he was actually in this movie. He plays a five-year-old, but kills it. Like, wow. like 12. Uh, which one's Jacob Tremblay? It's Child Actor Day on the uh, podcast. He is uh, a white ca- child. He is okay. 15 now. Narrowing it down. He's 15, and this movie came out in 2015, which was seven, seven years, years ago. ago. So he was nine ish. I haven't seen anything. <laughs> because Bad. Because I still haven't watched um, Doctor Sleep. Oh, he's in Ooh. that too. Yeah, oh, guys, he's Dr. in a lot of things. Sleep oh, it's so good. It's Dr. fantastic. Sleep is so good. It's it's. I am a, I am a big Mike Flanagan of Mike Flanagan. Oh my god, <laughs> um, I can't I can't you take any more son of a. Uh, he's also the boy from Wonder um, and Good Boys, and uh, he's in a lot of things. And the he's boys. Quite a bit. Uh, I think he's actually in a couple of a- animated films, too. Anyways, I don't like Brie Larson much, but she's dope in this movie. I mean, she is fantastic. Don't be such movie. a neckbeard, Danny. Yeah. Although, you know what? I was about to say earlier, when you, <laughs> I, I used to really like Brie Larson, but Captain Marvel really like killed it for me a little bit. And she's just so bad she, in that movie. Who she is as a person kind yeah, of Yeah, she seems me. like kind of... Just snotty. snooty, but maybe she's snooty because all these Marvel fanboys are talking trash about her on the internet. She seems a bit too. like a big C, which I. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she. How is. dare you, Frank? How dare you? She is a celebrity. She's Frank. the biggest <laughs> Captain Marvel. Thank you very Sorry, much. Sorry, all of our moms. <laughs> <laughs> um, also has a, a appearance from William H Macy in this movie. Oh, oh I love William, I love William, William H. H Macy. Love yeah. the dude. Um, I mean. 
it, it pits you against what a family has to deal with with losing their child while also that family member that they lost gain a, gained a child and has to re acquaintance themselves with their old family and old life while life is like past them by. She was kidnapped when she was mm. 17. So a lot like castaway in that sense. Yeah. I mean, reintegrating back into normal life. Except nobody has and sex with a volleyball in this movie. I'm assuming. I wouldn't hey, go that hey, hey, I wouldn't implied, go that far. Implied. Implied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't own Castaway on uh, on DVD, so I've never seen the deleted scenes. The top scenes. of that ball had to get frayed somehow. Oh, he had fair, to get in there somehow. Fair enough, though, dude. I haven't yeah. watched the deleted scenes either. Yeah. Castaway CLE, coming soon. Um, Stay tuned. Find out. Did he have sex with a volleyball? <laughs> there's definitely some tearjerker moments. I mean, most of the movie is told through the perspective of Jacob Tremblay, so through a five-year-old trying to understand the world like there's narration over it and um it's really cool how it just does it without m being stupid you know what i mean mm. without being dumbed down it's like it's a, not like am i going to get out of this room <laughs> no i mean he, yeah he talks about room as a person room is like Ooh, a character like the room is a character yeah That's room nice. is like a parent have you not seen this either no oh. oh well it's as of right now i know we always say this but it's it's on showtime if you have showtime okay. you can watch it um, Remake versus original The Room and Room coming soon <laughs> And Disaster Artist Yeah <laughs> Toss that in there for fun oh, Ah what <laughs> <laughs> um, This is a great movie about motherhood uh, hmm. I think it's a awesome movie I think if you guys have time Watch it. I think it's a nice, neat little... Well, I'm not going to have time for a little while, my friend. <laughs> yeah, again, I'm watching all of Survivor. It's two minutes under two hours, 118. What if, for the Ozark episode, you guys talk about Ozark and I just hit Survivor? I'm like, okay, it's season five. Uh, like when we did... Uh, what movie did we do where I watched <laughs> the wrong remake? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Black, Black Christmas. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> the Black Christmas debacle of 2019. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that was a great time. Instructions uh, not clear. Watch wrong movie. That must it's been 2020 that's right? 2020 christmas yeah. 2020 mm -hmm. wow i'm pretty sure because that that crappy black excellence had just <sighs> came out with imogen poots with poots imogen with pootsie. pootsie should be coming back <sighs> this episode she's interesting <laughs> uh speaking of interesting um room has a sorry the, <laughs> danny danny sent me his what numbers even though i've like told him like don't worry i'll just google it when when we get there ah, um, and he easier. went like one format for this first for his runner up and then completely different format for his, <laughs> wow. his first place uh made it was a, a better <laughs> format for the better movie <laughs> all right fair <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> no not fair <laughs> uh released on the 4th of september 2015 uh made on a budget of 13 million dollars uh, it's currently grossed 36.3 milli, uh, has a Rotten Tomato <laughs> score. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, that was for was Lil, that Wayne. Your Lil Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting fed up. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is getting fed up. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we're hitting the Seinfeld today, too. I love that. <laughs> um, has a Rotten Tomato score 93%, uh, an IMDb of 8.1 out of 10. Yeah, I agree with those. Pretty good. Wow. Yeah. Pretty good it score. is a great movie. That's pretty, 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 pretty solid scores pretty good yeah and, i might actually have to check perfectly. it out yeah hmm. sometimes janny gives me a suggestion i'm like ah, I, I probably disagree with your taste and i just forget about it but i'll probably watch that one hmm. i agree honest again i appreciate your candor this time you got it frank's turn frank's turn man hey. Give us your number one. best for last y'all best for last okay, let's for see. my number one pick and uh this is obviously goes to my mom my mom very much enjoys the horror films. Loves she does. B movies. Loves disaster movies. All about uh, D movies. Too. I'm not super big on disaster movies, although like Day After Tomorrow, I fucks with it. But then you have a whole bunch of uh, like knowing. <laughs> Weird. Dude, you know what? Okay, wait. All right, let's get. Wait. Day After Tomorrow is so it's terrible. A sweet I little love a Day After Tomorrow. Sidecar, really quick. I didn't I, say Day After Tomorrow was a great movie, David. I said, I love A Day After Tomorrow. Yeah. I just watched Knowing, and I used to hate on Knowing super hard. Oh, and I, just watched I could it never again. go back again, dude. It's not that bad. Uh, Man, I don't know. on my birthday, my parents were like, let's go to the movies. And then they picked the movie, and they oh, picked Knowing. Nice. I nice. was offended. Happy birthday. I'll never watch that movie again. It's not that bad. <sighs> It's not as bad as The Day After Tomorrow. I, I couldn't go back. I, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I think I'd rather watch Day After Tomorrow. Dude. This, <laughs> so, Day After Tomorrow is so funny, man. This is uh, a huge, anyways, yeah, <laughs> huge, huge digression. 
So I actually have a, a good one for my number one pick. 2014's The Baba Duke. Dude, I was going to go with this. Duke. Nice. Duke. Mm. Yeah. Nice job. Nice job. Nice love job, it. Nice love job. it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Uh, so The Baba Duke is about a single widowed mother, Amelia, who is struggling to cope with the loss of her husband and the raising of her emotionally difficult son, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't he just be normal? Uh, what a great meme. Uh, uh, in the days leading up to Sam's seventh birthday, a mysterious pop-up book with dark but awesome imagery uh, appears in Sam's bookcase. Uh, the family is then haunted by the entity described in the book story, Mr. Babadook, uh, who uh, we can only assume is some kind of like a demon, uh, I yeah. would imagine. Uh, and also like pride symbol. I'm you guys saying, haven't seen this? No. The Baba Duke has been like, um, what's the word? Uh, Does the LGBT community wear a lot of trench coats and top hats? No, no, no. But they have, um, uh, I can't think of the word right now. Pop up book. No, like when you take something for yourself. Oh, appropriation. Uh, they yeah. have appropriated. Yeah, they've appropriated the Baba Duke as an LGBT symbol. You for guys coming out. I don't because he how. comes out of the book. Okay, everyone, including our listener, <laughs> he, he does come out of the book. He has a point. <laughs> Every, everyone, including our listener, unless you're driving or something, just Google gay Baba Duke. Right I, I gotta, I gotta see this. I actually I'm see. This going is to why Google we need Google Mary Baba here. Um, I don't understand this at all. I better not be looking at some like second rate porn no, I right never, now. I would never do that to you. <laughs> never would I do that to you. I'm actually, I hope that's what it is. Oh, this is uh, by the Guardian. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Weird. After it was jokingly floated on Tumblr that he was gay. Okay, wait. <laughs> what? That's the most 2015 thing I've ever heard in my oh, life. Oh, this is from 20. Oh. Okay. No, I don't know when it's from. I'm just guessing. But yeah, that sounds like something. Gay Baba Dick was born when a somewhat ironic post to Tumblr in October went viral. When, whenever someone says the Baba Dick isn't openly gay, it's like, did you even watch the movie? <laughs> uh, well, I just watched the movie, and I have no idea what these people are talking about. Isn't it like his dad? No, no, it's not the. It's Bro, not, do no. you even gay, Frank? <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Uh, um, co-opted. Yeah. That's the word I was thinking of. Co-opted. The co-opted. The Babadook. Okay. Nice. Dang, um, I like that. So, uh, dude, yeah, my, I'm all discombobulated. <laughs> 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 Sorry, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah. um, Babadook, super dope monster. Love the the. Uh, visuals of the Babadook, super creepy, long fingies, you know what I mean? Love yeah. those long fingies. Love the way he floats across the floor. And the way he skitters just, across yeah. like a oh, cockroach man. all That's over creepy. the place. Love it. Love the uh, the audio of the monster, uh, The his voice, the Babadook, duck, duck. That is fun. I wish uh, our friend David Sines was here. He, he, he does nails it. Well. it. Yeah. He, he, uh, it's one of his... Uh, his um one of his what's few the other accomplishments. Act, yeah what's the other actor he does the impression of uh christopher walken oh he Got does a great do a christopher good. walken does do a and solid a great christopher walken, walken. Great christopher walken. <laughs> she just watch? <laughs> um the uh the main character amelia she uh does a great job of just playing like tired as f- <laughs> she just looks totally wrecked and uh sam the child actor does great too uh like he he does a wide emotional range between like uh, drugged up and tired to like concerned for his mom and sweet to like full blown like screaming episodes and yeah. he nails it like every little thing that he does um, love the way the story plays out uh, I don't think we get like too cheesy with like dead dad uh, the Babadook does pretend to be him for a second okay. as he's trying to like have the mom let him in um, but then she realizes it when she's like just just bring me the boy she's like wait what are you talking about his name's Sam. He's, what are you talking about? The boy. A lot of talk about the the boy today. Actually, now mm-hmm. that I think about it, um, we're we're still on the vivarium train. Um, vivarium. Vivarium. <laughs> vivacious. Uh, and the ending is probably one of my favorite horror movie endings. Um, Sam like totally home alone's the Babadook. He he's got like mm. at this point like his mom's totally possessed by the Babadook. Uh, classic like possession of like mom in trouble. The demon wants to get the mom so it can kill the child. Kill the child. You've got to kill classic. the child. Classic. classic. Um, but <laughs> Sam already like he he sees everything happening because he was paying attention to the book when his mom was reading it to him. Uh, he knows what it's going to go down so he's been setting up all these booby traps booby traps his mom stabs her in the leg great stuff Mm -hmm. um and then you think they've thwarted the babadook you get the typical scary movie ending but no you still get like Mm. one last little twist where like 
the the mom Amelia and the Baba Duke have a final like showdown, which is essentially just like a screaming match. Um, and she bests the Baba Duke, and he runs and hides in in the uh, cellar. Yeah, and then they just like keep him there let him be like there a pet. yeah they just live with it yeah um yeah. and i love that ending they just like uh because it's all like a metaphor of like learning to like live with your traumas mm-hmm. or her whole thing is like mm-hmm. she just wouldn't talk about the dead husband it's yeah. like that's not how you deal with things you gotta you gotta live it with it you, you know what i mean yeah. yeah what a nice analysis frank it's great that's um, good now that i know this i don't know if you guys saw i have my my pride flag out uh coming up for for june and- all i saw was durs dude Oh well, I understand that. I have my pride flag out outside, and I'm gonna have to get a Babadook flag now. Yeah, I, obviously, sh- not on this train, man. <laughs> I, I got to read that article. Like, how did it become? Yeah, that's this weird, is hilarious. Man. There's a, a post is like the Human Rights Council will appoint <laughs> the, the Babadook for Visibility Award. <laughs> what uh, the hell? <laughs> This is 2017. Don't be so close minded, Frank. Yeah, Frank. That's all I have to say. You o- homophobe. Open your mind up like a pop up. Jesus book. Christ. I don't think this has ever been uh, like said on the channel. Um, and I've, I actually know like a ton of people in my life like don't know this. It might be like a big moment for me, but I'm kind of doing this right now with a lot of family members anyway. But I'm bisexual and I, I don't <laughs> understand what is happening <laughs> with this, this Baba uh, Duke like LGBTQ. Sounds like you need to get a, a Pride Baba Duke tattoo for him. I don't know. No, I've always wanted to do uh, him from the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. That is nice. Mm-hmm. Get those mm-hmm. pincers. Get the clamps. Man, isn't that the original androgyny? Straight I up. mean, I remember being a little kid and seeing him and being I'm like, turned off. huh, I'm different. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it wasn't all Very the butts nice. from like cow and chicken and all that. No, not into uh, animal butts, despite being born and raised in Texas. Hey, not the red guy. <laughs> Although a hippopotamus. No, 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 I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> just kidding. It's not about exotic butts. I okay. want a hippopotamus for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, what an episode. Yeah, guess, this is a strange journey. I guess that's, well, this is Danny's job. I'm not going to steal his job because I have respect for Danny. Yeah. Some yeah. of us respect. No parts. one would ever do that. Um so that's our Big Mommy Milkers episode. <laughs> wow. And no, I wasn't sure if we were going to say it on, on, someone had to on hit record, it. but someone had to there hit it, it is. just like our fathers. And <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I might cut this out. I don't know. <laughs> well, I still have the editing power. Oh, goodness. But before we uh, move on from that, uh, be, be sure to check us out at Uninformed Movie Reviews on Instagram. Yeah. Like, share, and subscribe us yeah. on YouTube. Share us with a friend. Yeah. Uh, help them make fun of us through comments. I don't care. Let's go to Wrong button. One more second. <laughs> <laughs> I like the <laughs> oh. That was dramatic. Yeah. That's dramatic. Oh, that's the right one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. David, you got a story for us, dude. I do. You know what? Originally I was gonna like make a game. I felt like in a game mood Ooh, today. I like games. And I was like, let's do a game about like, you know ranking the best movie moms you know what i mean you are our bob barker uh yeah i'm always the guy who co- comes up with the game and then frank always loses the game that's the rules here <laughs> love games yes um, i didn't Quit do any love games with me love games I, I didn't do that game just a heads up so i thought especially with this being the mother's day episode and with this technically being are we gonna make macaroni art for our moms yay no that would have been cute but we don't have that kind of time. Uh, or that kind of macaroni. We got beans. With this being Michelle's first <gasps> Mother's Day, this gets into interesting no, this gets into interesting thing. You know, there, there's Next a, one. there's a divisiveness <laughs> about this. Um I don't know. Have you guys carried a baby for twenty weeks? You know what I mean? Not yet. Uh, I mean, cumulatively, <laughs> no, uh, with all the time I've Fair spent enough. carrying my nieces and nephews, I probably got her beaten. I think I'm a mom. There's a, there's a, uh, as long as you don't say dog mom, geez, that's a, no. that's a whole nother tirade. But anyways, I, that didn't go inside me. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a debate <laughs> online about when like your first mother's day is, but there is a, a strong number of people who say, it's like, I think it's like the abortion rule. You know what I mean? Whatever side the, the gay Babadook people are on, I'm on the opposite side. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm, and, that's and, a tough side. And that's the same side that says no. <laughs> The baby has to be out. This has to. This has to do with your definition of baby. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but these babies are pretty far along. Everybody, they got fingerprints. They got toesies. Do they have fingernails? They can. Yes, they can suck their own thumb. They're kicking. You can feel their kick. Have they started masturbating in the womb yet? When do they no. start doing no, that? They're not your kids. That's uh, <laughs> two hundred weeks. 
So 20 weeks, so she's what, four months, four and a half months-ish? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, five, actually. 20 divided by it's four. pretty far along. You're, the math hasn't been good for you. Today, Some months are good at relative than math. <laughs> Anyways, I thought, how about for today's uh, game, we do what is recommended you never do, and that's discuss baby names before the baby's born. Oh, man. So this this could be a dangerous record keep right here. We'll okay, find out. I'm excited. I have for you guys the top baby name choices that we have. But before we dive into that, Wait, I uh, thought, of this year or that you've made? No, no, for oh, us personally, oh. our personal list. This is gonna get weird. First, <laughs> what if I, we hate him. Well, exactly. This is oh, why you we'll don't tell people know. that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and potentially future children. Let them know as well. So, no, you know what? I'm sorry. May I interject here? Yeah. This is a smart idea because. We're terrible people. Yeah. And it's good uh, to like filter it out with us because we have the minds of like eight year old kids. And the same way too. like Fortune 500 companies should hire guys like us mm-hmm. to run their names by. Like mm-hmm. th- this is a smart idea. You yeah. Know I mean, yeah. You got to catch the uh, the inappropriate nicknames. Yeah. You got to catch the the bad abbreviations. Yep. Or Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So before we get into that all the way, why don't we first start with where did you guys get your names? I know where Frank got his. Uh, so yeah, my first name is almost a family name. Um, Franklin. Because uh, the family name is Francisco, but I just got Frank. <laughs> and my middle name is just, uh, yeah. it's like a biblical thing. It means from Christ. I was joking about what if we, you know, named the baby Franklin. Wouldn't that be hilarious? That'd it be would cute. be funny. Like a turtle. Yeah. But then it would get too confusing. Frank Franklin's Franklin. a good name. Plus, you don't want to give people that kind of credit. Same reason why George is off the list, because CG would make it unbearable. <laughs> For well, years. I'm better than George. Fair enough. Yeah. And George is a bad name. I'm sorry, George. Yeah. George is not a good name. And Michelle's dad is also George. It's kind of sad that, his, <laughs> that the name got knocked off because of George CG. Okay, Danny, what about you? Um, I was originally going to be named Levi. Levi? Yeah, because of his Bible. Well, that's good, too, because you're such a wrangler, man. <laughs> I only wear Levi's actually. I am wearing Levi's right now. Wow, well, okay. Um well it's my dad's name, Daniel. So I'm a Daniel Jr. I got his legit full name Jr. and I hate it. What's and your middle name? Nicholas. Nicholas. He's also Nicholas, right? He is also Nicholas, yeah. This gets into Don't another... you have a Jude in there somewhere? I have a Jude in there yeah. somewhere. Danny has like seven Danny's like What's the truly full Hispanic. Thing? Daniel Nicholas Jude Bonilla Garcia Jr. Oh god, that's nice. a mouthful, man. Hell yeah. That's nice though. What's, what's what, Daniel D N J B G J B G J B G S Dinner B G J. Yeah, and I'm David Pena Jr. Yeah, no oh. middle name, no middle name. Neither does my dad. I feel like I knew that about you before. Yeah, that. Mm-hmm. which gets into well, the whole why thing. we make middle names for him. No. So <laughs> let's hit let's hit the boy names first. I mean, obviously the first choice is David Pena three. DP3. No man, you can't do it. You can't do it. No. I'm highly against this. And no, you could. I wanted to be like third or fourth, no. and I didn't get it. I I hated being a junior as a young man, and then when I got to like 24, I flipped on it, and I was like very excited about it. I hate it, and I've never changed my mind on it. Because yeah, we got two DJs over here. Two DJs. There's reasons for it, and there's reasons against it. The reasons against it for me are I hate getting my dad's mail accidentally. I hate... I have actually been refused a firearm because they confused uh, my name with my dad's name, and he does have a I just got to file felon, a little bit yeah. more paperwork. No, I don't want to do that. Now, I was wondering, <laughs> you know what you should do? And this is a, just like totally off topic, but if I don't tell you now, you, I'm just totally going to forget. You should apply for a, uh, a, a, a personal identifier number uh, huh. with the ATF. Oh, I see And what that you're way saying. you just use it you on your forms, that. and yeah. then they'll know it's like you. Oh, That's a good idea. There you go. Yeah. Um, I'm also... As a child that's against this and has been raised a junior, um, I thought about a third for a while. Yeah. If I do have a kid, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's a little vain mm. first, but then secondly, um, you know, I'm planning on changing my name when we get married. Really? Yeah. I don't want to have- To what? I don't know where I'm deciding last name. That's right the now. time to do it though. Poops. Yeah. Poots. Danny Poots. Poots. Uh, Poots is a hot runner. Yeah. D-D. It's up there. <laughs> um, so- what if I gave an unofficial third? What if I give him a middle name, but still call him the third, which is kind of cheating? You That's call him three? A little like bit. David something, Pena well, That would third. be like saying Frank's a junior. He's not a junior. He's not really a junior. Yeah, I'm disqualified. Let's just yeah. say like the middle name was, you know, Curtis. David Curtis Pena, which is not on the list, okay? But then you could just call <laughs> him Curtis. have to play football. <laughs> you could just call him Curtis. You big know what Kurt, I mean? Which would end up being the big hurt. Yeah. So he's still eventually, you know, he's still David. Hmm. 
but we'll just call him the middle name so it doesn't get confusing at family reunions. Everyone would have to call him three. Yeah, or, three. Or, or Trey, which is which Ooh. I saw was like a nickname for people who were the third. Ooh. Trey's like pretty douchey. Yeah, I don't Trey like that. is like a date rapist. Trey's, I just think of Broad City. Trey sells fake drugs to like 13 year olds. Yeah. It's a very 90s name. Interesting. Okay. Well, we'll come back. We'll come back. And also keep in mind that. You also, know, there's too many Davids, David. I, I'm running this by you guys, but also I will totally disregard your opinion in naming Fair a child. Which never is for the once did I think you were going to take my opinion in consideration. But also, that being said, fair. I still feel like you should just name them both Alex. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next one Charlie. I like Charlie. Or maybe Charles, like Charles on the birth certificate. Yeah, and then you could do Charles. Charles is a nice name. Isn't Charles kind of white, though? Well, you got a Chuck. too spicy. Instant Chuck. Chuck. Instant Chuck. Chuck Pena. Or Carlos. Or Chaz. CP. Oh, Chaz is gross. Chaz is a name for Charles. bad initials, too. Yeah. What's CP? It was child pornography. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. And See, I only this know is this. why you gotta do this. Yeah, I only know this because on a lot of forums, like uh forums. it's like it's like uh yeah, like like uh message boards and stuff like that. From, what like, are you on, Frank? No, no, this <laughs> is from like, a lot of eight chan this forums. Is, this is from like like MySpace days, you know okay. what I mean? It's just like uh CP will be like a uh, like uh reported to the proper authorities. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is a Interesting. thing. Interesting. Okay, let's keep going. Ezra. I like Ezra's Ezra. cool. Yeah. EP extended play. Yeah. El Paso. I, I like had that. thought about Ezra as a, as a son's name at some point. Michelle loves Ezra. I also ran these names by my high school kids. They hate Ezra. I uh, think Ezra's terrible. They're high school well, kids. Well, maybe it's because Ezra Miller is kind of a cuck. Well, that's going on too, right? Yeah. Ezra Miller, it's like, that's the name associated with it. Okay. Eli. I like Eli. Ah, the book of. the book. Yeah, I see. I, I don't <laughs> know how Denzel. I feel about the Denzel Washington movie. <laughs> hey, man. But it'll be so old by yeah. then that no one will even remember it. Yeah. Eli Manning, famed mouth breather. <laughs> Super Bowl champion. Uh, I'm not feeling as hot about Eli now, actually. <laughs> I like Eli. Okay. Elliot. I All love right. Elliot. Interesting. Elliot's a good man's name. Elliot was also the top high school pick. They loved Elliot. Also, Elliot's like the 168th most popular boy name. I looked these up online. Yeah. I don't want a top 10 boy name. You know no. what I mean? No. Look I ain't, at David and Daniel. I'm I ain't Frank. going Aiden. I ain't going no, Braden. Braden. Jaden. Jaden. None of those. Jaden. <laughs> Hunter, Tanner, okay. Forrest. Sorry. Last one on the list here, Waluigi. <laughs> we found All a right. winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a winner. Two stars to Waluigi. Okay, uh, interesting. Yeah, dude, I think uh, Eli or Elliot. Elliot's, Elliot's a good name because it's not in style right now. There's one. Yeah. It's not overly made, but I mean, also you got Elliot Smith. You got yeah. like... Isn't Elliot the name of Brendan Car- Brendan Fraser's character in it is. Uh, Bedazzled? It Bedazzled. Is. Hell yeah. My it mom is. also brought up that comedian, uh, something Elliot. I think he's the one in Scary Movie. No, what is he? Sam in? Elliot's not a comedian. He's oh, a cowboy. no, someone else. You know, you also got to be... Elliot's also the character from Euphoria, the second oh, yeah. season. You know, you got to be prepared for, for, for Smell Elliot, though. And he's got to be prepared for Smell Elliot. Uh, Elliot. It's not Sue. that bad. It's not as bad as Sue, but it'll yeah. still give him a little bit of character. Okay. Smell Elliot is not bad. And that's only like a, a grade school one. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, by, by like fifth grade, it's like... It's like, dumb. oh, you're stupid calling people Smell Elliot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fair enough. Okay, here's the girl names. Number one, Barbara. Barbara. No. 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 Mecca Barbara Streisand. I know this was Michelle's, Michelle's mom's, mom's name. name. Yeah. So I'm not going to hate on Barb. it too hard, but I just... It's a little old, too old? It's an old lady name. See, I never thought of it that way. Also a dog's name. But all of... Oh, that's true. I think that's uh, Link's dog's name. For it Met is Link. Link's dog's name. Um, All the high school kids said the same thing. They were like, no, they're, they're going to make fun of her. Yeah. That's an old lady name. Or people will call her Barbara. Barbara. You know what? That makes it's funny because in high school I dated this girl named Barbara, <laughs> and that's how George would say her name. Barbara. 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 <laughs> he would really overpronounce it. Okay. Uh, Eleanor. Eleanor. Ellie. Ellie. Yeah, that works better. I like uh, Eleanor. Elaine. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about that. I think Ellie okay. is nice. Okay. 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 Chloe. Yeah, Chloe's good. Chloe's a good name. CP again, though. But also, yeah, you do yeah, have the problem CP. with CP, but I automatically think of like Chloe, like the meme, like the little white girl with the weird face. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was that girl's name. Well, that's yeah. not bad. She's she's no, a, it's she, a fire uh, meme. Yeah, she's queen. It's good stuff. This was also the high schooler's top choice was Chloe. Hmm. Okay. Thomason. Thomason. No. Baby voice McKenzie. Yeah, that's true. That's the yeah. only other Thomason in the world, it yeah. seems like. I don't McKenzie. like and it. It's uh, uh, Baby Voice McKenzie and The Hospital. <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is also what my mom said. That's yeah. hilarious. Okay. I ran these by my parents too, which is another thing they tell you not to do. All right. What about Allison? Allison. I know of quite a few Allisons and they're good people. It's one of my first girlfriends. Mm, interesting. Caroline. 
Caroline, Caroline. It's gonna be sung at for the rest of her life. You think that song's still gonna be popular in ten yes. years? I will. I'll Not do it. that song, but "Sweet Caroline." Oh, sweet will still Caroline. continue to be popular. And she's gonna be like every person named Sherry, or mm-hmm. you know what I mean, um, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, Michelle. Uh, uh, what's the Aerosmith song uh, about a girl? I can't remember. Oh, uh, Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, she's going to be sung at for the rest of her life. It's a nice name. It's but... nice to be sung at sometimes. Okay, two more here. Ada. Ada. Ada Von like my Braun. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that's true. Even weirder. Oh, yeah. ADA? ADA, yeah. Oh, people are going to call her Ada. Ada, yeah. See, a, a, a mispronounced name is also Sucks. annoying. Sucks. Okay, last one. Sabrina. Yeah, great name. Yeah, like yeah. it. I kind of like Very Sabrina. 90s. It's been growing on me. I mean, I know it's the Teenage Witch. Whatever. But it's kind of a it's cool a good name. name. Yeah. Sabrina. Cool name. No one's named Sabrina either. And it's been a while since I've met a person named Sabrina. That's and then it's me. SP. It could be Smashing Pumpkins. It could be uh, Game Boy Advance SP. Oh, silver and Platinum. Mm. There you go. There you go. There you okay. Go. Well, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you got some really thanks strong for, contenders. Thanks for your there. guidance here. We're going to have to uh, narrow these down. Elliot and Sabrina sounds like a nice couple. I'm on the fence just, about just the third. Throw them on the a wheel, thing. baby. Just throw, throw them on, on a wheel. wheel hit spin that, that wheel. thing. Shut Let's put them on some sticks and we'll pick that there you stick. Go. There yo. you go. Do it while Michelle's giving birth. Wow. Just bust out the sticks. Wow. <laughs> Michelle, it's time. Oh, Two. And then Danny and I come from behind the curtains. <laughs> pick, pick that stick. stick. She'll be all drugged out. Uh, She'll be drugged out, but f- pissed. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be so mad. <laughs> that, will, that will make her lucid. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to get D3 the Mighty Ducks up here if we do do D3. <sighs> Dang, there's a D3 Mighty Ducks. Yeah. That's exciting. The Olympic. I'm, I'm uh, not up for the third, personally, but fair enough. This is your baby. Obviously, but that's my... a spite choice from Danny. <laughs> yeah, you Obviously... could get a spite choice name. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, my dad is really pulling for it. You know, I know I mean? he is. But, I'm sure he is. Yeah, I'm sure he is. But part of me, honestly, right now, the top contender for me for boy name would be David Elliot the third. You mm. know what I mean? Unofficial third. Oh, I'm you could just call him Elliot. Then you just call him Elliot. Yeah. We just call him by his middle name. And you know I mean? Andrew McMillan, his real first name is Thomas. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Was it? Is this the same scenario? They, they wanted just, to make him a junior or something? Or uh, well, his dad's name is Thomas. Yeah. See? So That's what I'm saying. But he's, his dad comes by Pete. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's just confusing. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a special Mother's Day baby name. I like that. Um, yeah. Thanks for your input, guys. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what I got for you. You always got to think back to your middle school brain. Like, what? Yes, how can I make truly. fun of this kid? You know what I mean? Yeah. What are the initials going to be? What's going to happen? How? Yeah. How oh, much your name's teeth? Jake. Uh, not Bonner. Jake. Boater. Yeah. I mean, there's no help. Not Bonner. to hit the uh, the Seinfeld again, but like, uh, like, uh, what does he think that lady's name is? Uh, Mulva. <laughs> Mulva. <laughs> and then ends up being like Dolores. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. <laughs> Seinfeld episode ranking coming soon. Uh, that down. was interesting, I'm David. Down. I am down. <laughs> Sorry. I am totally, totally down. down. Also, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Donate. Uh, okay, we're going to rank the Seinfeld seasons. That's what we'll do. Ooh, That's an easy I one. I could get into yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. I could get it's into that. It's just like that. reverse order for me almost. <laughs> Pretty much. The show gets better as yeah. it goes along, man. That, that was show's uh, so good. That was quite interesting. All right. Thank quite you. interesting, David. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Uh, so now that's going to go ahead and kick us on to our next segment, which is Character Limit Extended. Extended. Stretch it. And we are talking about, I don't remember. Vivarium. 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 I don't care. Vivarium. Vivarium. It's a dead language. You can pronounce it however you want. Beautiful. Right? I yeah. think this goes to me because I had the Hemingway. You did have the Hemingway. I also am the outlier here. I'm the one who didn't enjoy this movie. True. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> I've, been thinking, I've been thinking about it. I almost thought about writing a book report and just reading it. You know what I mean? Uh, but here's basically my issues with Vivarium. Um, there were some things about this movie I really like. I think there's some really nice aesthetic choices. Um, I think there's some generally, uh, genuinely creepy things about the movie. I really like Imogen Poots. I've liked her since I saw her in 28 Weeks Later. I thought she was really cool. Whoa. Um, she's the the daughter in 28 Weeks Whoa. Later. Um, I didn't think about that. I hate Jesse Eisenberg. I hate him ever since I first saw him. It's really hard to yeah. enjoy Jesse Eisenberg. It's hard to scrub the yeah. suck. Yeah. So to be fair, this, this is already like a weird kind of like, I'm interested in her performance, but I already am biased against Eisenberg. Uh, Vivarium for me, just, it ultimately felt a bit one note. 
Like there's there's like one particularly creepy thing with the boy character, and that's that he's creepy. Um, if you guys haven't seen this movie, haven't heard a review yet. Basically, Vivarium is like uh, a family is a, a couple is looking to start the next uh, part of their life. They're going to start forming a family, and they meet this really creepy salesman who shows them this uh, cookie cutter uh, neighborhood. And while he's showing them this house, this really creepy guy, he disappears and then they find out i cannot we can't leave there's no way out of here we're stuck here and then just this- you've ever been stuck in like uh like a cult of psyche like kind of neighborhood deal yeah. like it's like how did i get lost it's in a here? little paranoid but also like yeah. we've been here for half an hour all right when are we getting out it's fun too because they like they try to use their phone but the you know there's no service and it it, it feels like a little like a millennials kind of problem but it's relatable um so the first thing is is some of the characters to me they don't act in a sensible way into in, in which I feel like kind of lessens the tension a little bit. And what I mean is immediately they don't recognize how creepy and off-putting this house salesman is where uh, there's uh, not, a, yeah, there's not a realistic reaction to what he, to the presentation he's giving. Like this scenario should have never happened. They should have never gone with this guy. Well, I'd, I'd have to disagree with you there. Because Jesse so? Eisenberg says out loud, wow, Martin, you are one creepy, uh, what does he call him? A creepy, um, persuasive mother. But they're um, gonna but the only reason them? they follow him is because they've already been looking at houses for yeah. like months yeah. and she's been saying no to everything. Which so is he's a good like, reflection. Well, let's go see. Like, I just want to find a house so we can stop looking at houses. And it, is and it is weird because the only thing that Martin says is he just respe- he just mocks them. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying though. I mean, I think if you were in this real scenario, you'd be like, "Let's go somewhere else." <laughs> yeah, you know maybe. what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't see why you would stick around for the salesman. But anyway, then they get there in this market, David. In this market, <laughs> in this economy, then they get there. Uh, they're stuck there essentially. Yeah, I like that part. That part's. Yeah. We get a little bit of frustration. Them kind of driving around, but then the movie just kind of decides. Like, I don't know what else we're gonna do with this idea. There's, there's no exploration of the neighborhood. They're not going into the other houses. It would have been interesting to see them like breaking into the other house just to find out it's exactly like the other. You know what I mean? I thought they tried to get in the other houses and they didn't want to open. Did they? I thought it it's just possible. wouldn't open. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, basically, our, our characters become complacent, where they just decide, yeah. you know what? We're here. And this is it. I mean, we do have Jesse Eisenberg kind of getting into his best Shia LaBeouf and, like, digging that hole, uh, which is which is fun. A little bit of mania going on here. Yeah. Um, like, works himself to death well, like a young uh, Japanese businessman. They try setting the house on fire first. They do that, too. To which it comes back <laughs> like right yeah. away. Um, um, and then the box shows up. So then I guess... I guess you know, there are some things that, you know, that they attempt to do. So then the box shows up, we have the little boy. And then I also feel like, okay, you know, five minutes in, we get w- what the creepiness with the boy is. He's, he's got an 80 yard voice. It's very unsettling. Which is really awesome, like dude. I it's love un- it's that unsettling, part. But, but that's it. That's the, that's the whole bit. It is so weird. Um, <laughs> it's uh, now I do got to say one of my favorite parts of the movie is uh, when the boy becomes older and there's a scene where, uh, she's she's attacking the boy and chasing him, and then he like scurries away and like under also, yeah yeah like a cockroach yeah into this like new dimension kind yeah. of thing. That's very interesting. But then that scene just kind of ends. Mm. Well, and I saw that as like uh oh no, no continue. I don't, I don't well, derail the, the scene just sort of ends and and then that's it. It's like we had this idea, it's finished now. Um, and that's ultimately how the movie ends. Also, where. There's there's a bit of a reveal. I don't want to spoil it because I think I mean if anything it is it's a good movie worth watching. It, at least. I, honestly, I don't know. But the, <laughs> if, you, if you guys feel that way, that's okay. I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna uh, unusually I'm not gonna you know trash talk anybody. There's not really a twist. Well, it's a li- it's a reveal. Yeah, at the there's end. a reveal. It's a reveal. But then the reveal ultimately ultimately is okay. So then what? Like why did this happen? What's the motivation for this happening? It's gonna happen again. But why? Like, what's going on? Is this a, this is, I guess, is a metaphor for the, uh, the cyclical kind of like the trap of suburbia that we get ourselves into, which is cool. But this is what we said in the first 15 minutes of the movie. So, and, and ultimately, I mean, the review that I went with was like, 
It's it's a premise that stretched a bit too far. Thirty it, minute premise stretched too far. It, it could have been a really tight Black Mirror episode. Yeah, you know what I mean. Which in themselves are like ninety minutes. Yeah, and those are pretty long. Yeah. Okay, maybe it could have been a better Twilight Zone episode. Okay, it could have been a damn good Courage the Cowardly Dog episode. It really made me feel like Courage the Cowardly Dog had a lot of that. And to be fair, energy. Courage would have done it creepier. Yeah. I think it might have been. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Some of the creepy stuff works for me. I really like the aesthetic choices. I love the creepy clouds. I really liked that whole scene. But to me, it's just uh, and in, in a review that I didn't mention, it just feels very skippable. It's not like groundbreaking. It's, it's not anything. Jesse Eisenberg broke so much ground, though. <laughs> <laughs> but did he, though? You know what I mean? Uh, ultimately, does he get anywhere? Uh, and that he and, does. And the he, end, the end there yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. The he end really there does. also feels like a bit, you know. The end goal is in sight. There, it's like, um, it's very like Edgar Allan Poe in a weird way. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's uh, what I liked about it the yeah. most. Honestly, it it just seemed kind of, uh, you know, it's like okay, I get where we're going now. And Are you referring to the here. cask of Amontillado? Well, I was thinking more of Telltale Heart. Yeah. But, oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, it could be several uh, Edgar Allan Poe's. Um, I did go uh, after after I realized how much you guys like this movie. I was like, I need to look at the numbers for this movie, <laughs> and I'm not going to hit the numbers. Oh, I'm respecting Danny, and now I'm respecting Frank. Wow, the numbers are pretty sad on this movie, guys. I did see that. Yeah, they're a little rough. Not saying that the numbers are always right, but yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like sometimes the numbers don't mean. But it was the audience score, particularly that was. <sighs> you know, even that though, sometimes, man. <sighs> I mean, look it up real quick. Some, oh, yeah, well, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it, right it here, had like yeah. a 40 something when I looked on IMDb. On IMDb, it's considerably less than Final Fantasy Spirits so Within. 5.8 out of 10. 5.8. IMDb. But the Rotten Tomatoes audience score was something that I was like, interesting. And if nothing else, the number just, it made me be like, okay, this makes sense why we're so divided here. Why, like, I really Sem- didn't enjoy this. And Se- Sorry, yeah. go ahead. 72 tomatometer. 39 audience score. Yeah, I mean, 39% audience score is interesting. Hmm. Uh, usually, I disagree with the audience score more more than the uh, the critic score. Um, but all I'm saying is this is a bit divisive for me. Not really worth uh, the watch. Just watch our CLE review instead. Definitely watch our CLE <laughs> review. <laughs> Leave a comment. Throw us a like. L- click that bell as Share that well. bad boy. Okay, what, who had a... You were the trip? Uh No, Danny's next with Danny's the trip. trip. I had the book report. I uh, originally suggested this movie mm-hmm. because I happened to stumble upon it. I also think you you did... you. Uh, what was it? You understood the assignment. This is a very Mother's Day-ish movie. Yeah, this is yeah. a nice pairing with it's, what we had going on today. It's on brand with what mm-hmm. we were going through. Um, I wanted to go with Mother, but I do know that at some point we're going to hit a ranking. I actually thought someone was going to use Mother for today. Um, that's why I didn't go mm, with it. Too biblical. Yeah. Well, too on the nose, to be honest. <laughs> uh, even though I chose a, mo- um, a, a yeah. movie called Mama. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this movie is not perfect by any by any standard. Like, it, there's a moment between like the second and third act, I guess you could say, that it really lulls. Like where where the boy, it's like, all right, yes, the boy's creepy. He continues to do these creepy things, but then you start realizing that there is a extra dimensional aspect to a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff. And then you're just like, okay, now I can kind of see what's going on. You, you kind of get that aspect when you're just like, okay, this house won't burn down or, okay, they're just getting sent these prepackaged meals of, is this food? Uh, what was the the note that came with the kid? Feed the boy and you'll be and fr- set free be set or free. something. Creepy uh, prepackaged food too. Yeah. How does Jesse Eisenberg have this uh, long-term girlfriend that's willing to move in with him when he's so unlikable? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's like, a man. They're looking for a house when he's like a, a just a handyman or something. Too. He's a landscaper. He's a landscaper. Yeah, that's why not he's even the... full blown handyman. Hey, I mean, landscapers can make a good amount. No, of I'm not saying that. Uh, but but I, he doesn't even have his van yet. I was he's pretty like, sure he like was startup. jobless. Like I was pretty sure he was like jobless. Yeah, how are you going like to get the... pre-approved for your home loan when you don't have the income? No, he's not jobless. He's there like cutting the trees at her school at the beginning. Oh, of the movie. that's yeah. what it is. Okay, okay. Oh, and I forgot about the whole intro of the movie. Mm-hmm. But I got to say the bird, uh, baby bird the opening. Cuckoo. The very cuckoo. cool. Sorry. Uh, reminded me a lot of uh, of uh, Us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With the rabbits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for those who didn't see it, the the movie starts up with a a cuckoo, a cuckoo, a cuckoo, cuckoo, Uh, a cuckoo. (laughs) No, that's you. That's the (laughs) Japanese translation for Danny. It's a bird that invades other birds' nests and 
poses as a baby to fool the other birds into feeding them. And then it just kills all the other babies and then just leaves. So it's like poetry it rhymes. I mean, it, it's like the, <laughs> it's like the, the smoking gun, the, the, the gun in the beginning of the movie. You know what I mean? Never have an invasive bird species in <laughs> yeah. act one. That if you you're ain't not gonna going have... to allude to. Yeah. 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 Act three. In act three. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, do we even have to skirt around what the, skirt. what they're talking about? I mean, it's it's just that there is like a very last minute reveal. But I, I mean, immediately just watching the trailer, you know, okay, this creepy baby uh, slash child that's growing up rapidly is it human? Is not human. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you get that. For those of you who haven't taken sexual education yet, like if you like go to school in Texas, or oh something, Florida, uh, yeah, Florida, but throw the Florida in there too. Babies don't come in boxes. No, they don't. Not by stories. And can't well, they kind of do depending on how crude you are as a person they do come from a one box um like danny over here <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. D- danny's got the low brow yeah uh, like i said you got, got the alley oop i just <laughs> slam it on in yeah um <laughs> yeah it does uh i like the ending of it i like that it ends kind of abruptly once you get the reveal um and i like that it cycles back to the beginning which this movie in in itself is a cycle uh about cycles about the lo- the life cycle and the ovarian mm-hmm. cycle for that matter. True. Sure. True that. True that. Um, but it's good. It's, it's, it's a good watch as a person who likes sci-fi. I, I would recommend hmm. it to anyone who likes sci-fi. Is it sci-fi? I don't know if it's sci-fi. It's not like the internet says it is. I mean, really? it is classified yeah. as a sci-fi. It's like a sci-fi s- horror s- mystery. Satire. Yeah. Interesting. I would, I would actually reverse that order. I would say it's a mystery horror sci-fi. Sci-fi question mark. I mean, it's not. Very but you would spell it like sci-fi, sci-fi? channel. Yeah. It's not like S Y F Y. It's not like a technological sci-fi. No, I mean it's like that. There's a little sci-fi premise at the end. If you call Twilight Zone sci-fi, then yeah. Yeah, I would. I would definitely I would uh, qualify so. yeah. Twilight Zone as sci-fi. There's a couple of sci-fi episodes. They play it on Sci-Fi Channel. True. Mm-hmm. That's True. enough. Definitely like Pulp Fiction sci-fi. Like. Twilight Zone is Pulp Fiction sci-fi, like Pulp mm. Fiction. Is, I thought you meant no the, like, in the Quentin literal Tarantino's sense of. Pulp I was Fiction. like, Danny, I hate to disagree with you, but Pulp Fiction is not science. Fi- is <laughs> no, not sci-fi. No, no, no. no, but Pulp Fiction, in the literal sense, yeah. starts from sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, not you're talking about like not hardcore like Martin uh, Short in. Uh, uh, what's that HBO uh, Showtime series that's coming back? Um, Party Down. Oh, uh, oh. He's like, no, just hard sci-fi, not fantasy bullshit. <laughs> nice. Nah, it's a fun movie. I liked it. It's a good watch, from my opinion. Frank? And uh, I guess I'll keep on kind of short, because I already talked so much on the episode, but... Um, about it. Like Danny, like uh, I loved the ending. I love endings. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> you were in the shorts. I'm wearing the shorts too. and the shoes. <laughs> uh, uh, so um, yeah, I really like the ending. I like that it's not full reveal. I, I love the fact that we don't get answers. It's uh, we're in the mm. same situation as the main characters in the story. They don't get to find out why this whole thing's happening. You know what I mean? <laughs> they have no idea, and we'll never know either. It's a, it's mm. almost. Uh, pointless and like futile in their eyes you know what i mean they're just there to serve their purpose die get put into a bag get tossed into the hole and clear out the house for the next person i loved uh how well that paired with the despair and the hopelessness throughout the whole movie (laughs) i also really like the lull when you hit like between those acts because it's like that's it's the mundane they're just trapped in this house eating food with no taste and like uh like they're 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 alive but they're not living you know what i mean they're just there to Mm. make the make sure this thing doesn't die for whatever purpose because we don't get to find out um i hope to god like uh like don't sequel this movie i don't want to know any more about it than i already know i Mm. i think it's perfect the way that it is Mm -hmm. well Um, i can't imagine it'll get a sequel no i I can't can't imagine imagine, it has very much it made very much money but i mean i doubt it didn't it come out in covid times i'm pretty sure it did i think it's 2019 this might be a casualty of the covids um but yeah like I personally i thoroughly enjoyed this watch Mm -hmm. i watched it a second time i enjoyed it too much Oh, okay. um, made on a budget of four million, they've currently grossed four hundred thirty-four thousand dollars. Yeah, uh, I think so it went straight to Prime. Hopefully, nobody mortgages their house for this one. I think his movie also came out on my birthday. It's March twenty-seventh, twenty nineteen, isn't it? Wow, it is m- May. Oh, oh no. Well, March twenty seventh in Ireland is when it came out. Uh, it debuted at the Cannes Festival, uh, May eighteenth, twenty nineteen. Cannes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it. <hit> it. Uh, <laughs> 
Fantastic, David. Fantastic. Um, love the creepy boy. Love that he hits like uh, before he gets like full blown like young man. He hits a puberty thing where the ADR voice gets like deeper and squeakier for a second. Like I, I mm-hmm. like I remember sitting up in my chair like, ooh, they're they're like hitting it. This kid is growing like a dog. What's a dog? Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> um, I love how annoyed they seem the whole time. I love when they start to separate and the because it, it's like Jesse Eisenberg's losing his mind. And like, even though Imogen Poots is keeping it together, she's losing her companion that she's going through this now. Now she's become totally isolated, totally hopeless, totally devoid of any kind of like real answer. Um, I thought that that last scene when she chased him under the thing, it was her falling through the other houses. Those were other people going through oh, yeah, that's the same thing at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I thought that was the past version of their house. No, I think no, those were it other was, people it was currently other going through the yeah. same situation. Huh. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe not the legit other houses, but yeah. I think it's like you know, multi, multi-dimensional multi I, I thought know, it was more right? of like a time travel kind of thing. Like we're all trapped in this house. Yeah, I Forever. definitely thought it was like uh, another thing. Yeah, especially because hmm. uh, the little boy who's clapping, watching those those two uh, oh, bang yeah. it out, if you will, uh, is a different boy. Like he's he's got a different face. It's not the oh, same was boy. It? Hmm. Yeah, there's a bunch of the boys being raised. Yeah, I totally dug it. Um, if you like feeling hopeless and uh, like not having answers, mm. the, the, I, I'd recommend this one for you. The plot of this movie reminds me of that one moment in Signs when he's talking to the general and he's just like, uh, "What's it called? It's a military technique." They call it probing. They uh, send a few out, make sure that signs are clear Yeah, before the rest come in. Well, I think that already <laughs> happened, and they're just like farming oh, yeah, they, for whatever reason. You know what I mean? They're Maybe in, they're saving they're integrating. up the one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. That was cool. Assimilation. That was very cool. Let us know what you think of Vavarium. Imogen Poots' min- middle name is Gay. Imogen Gay Poots, what a rough name! <laughs> what a rough name! We're yeah, just probably, talking about like probably names had a tough too. time in middle school. Yeah, for sure. Uh, she's thirty-two. Huh. Interesting. Well, let's head it on over to uh, everyone's favorite real hypothetical segment. Uh, peeps and predicts. It's the hypothetical segment that's real, and we pit. Two hypothetical or real people in two hypothetical or real. Stop trying to take this other cup, you son <laughs> of a b- <laughs> Stop being greedy. <laughs> hit, it one, hit it one more time. Hit it one more time, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we take two people or peeps and put them in predicts or predicaments and see who comes out on top. Our qu- current champion is not the foot. Who got defooted? It's John Stewart, Danny. Remember the Green John Lantern? Stewart. The John? one that Frank was being racist towards last episode. <laughs> John with no H. I don't remember being racist the last episode. Well, no, it's because you were talking trash about Johns without an H, and I was like, you really had to, you really had to attack the only black <laughs> Green Lantern. Oh yeah, and then I was like, you know, I know, uh, you know, that he's I don't not know. black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so our reigning peeps and predicts champion is John Stewart, one of the many Green Lanterns. Yes, and not Daily Show John Stewart. Not, yeah, because there's like. Like thousands of them, right? Like yeah, through the multiverse. There's a core, but Isn't like, there like a like the a, Earth like ones, a, like like half animal ones and weird there, stuff. There's a Green yeah. Lantern core, so like every planet has a protector. Yeah, and and they're you know they appoint someone who's you know virtuous enough to get the lantern ring. But then there's also like black lanterns and yellow lanterns. Yeah, they're all the emotional spectrum. There's some chartreuse lanterns. They're like care bears, but the black lanterns bigger. are dead. There's, there's they they sim- signify death, hmm. and then the white lanterns are. Like uh, rebirth. There's burgundy like lanterns, yeah. aquamarine lanterns, mauve, mauve, mauve ra- lanterns. Yeah, <laughs> lilac lanterns. Miami blue. There is a cerulean yeah. lantern. Yeah. Is there really a cerulean? Lantern? Yeah. There's cerulean. There's oh, green. God. There's orange. The orange ones are powered by uh, greed, and then there's the red ones are wrath. It's uh, the dumbest thing yeah. I've ever heard. It's kind of dumb. Um. Anyways, there's only like five Earth ones, as far as I know. Huh. Um. I'm getting bored. I feel like I'm on a comic book podcast. Let's, let's hit this next thing. Yeah, I'm usually bored when we're talking about comic book stuff. <laughs> the first predict. Oh, the, sorry. The first people are Harry Potter versus Draco Malfoy. Wow. Oh, wow. This is quite an old one. That's been rolling around in that cup for a little while. Our now. Hogwarts ranking. Frank, you want to get the first one? You want me to get it? What's our predicament? Whose bake sale item is selling out first? Harry Potter. Yeah, I, mm. I honestly think it would be Harry Potter. I don't think anyone would buy something. Draco's devoid of the secret ingredient that makes brownie so good. Which is love. Draco would have his dad buy. uh, (laughs) His dad would buy them all. His dad would buy baked goods to sell. He would have Crab and Goyle like out there, like, you know, giving it out and stuff. But 
Yeah, I don't think he would come close to the sales that clearly yeah. Harry's Harry's always going to come out on top. Yeah, of course Harry's got no mom to help him make the baked goods. Harry's got no mom, but he but does have got... a community around him that yes. would give him some some uh, what's it the MacGuffin Hogwarts yes. that would like Mama Mama Weasley would help. Yeah, him I was going to say he's got the Weasleys. Yeah, well that was easy, and this is even before he started banging their daughter. <laughs> Thanks for the like family ship and stuff. I'm gonna start banging everyone. <laughs> oh, you're like a son to us. Ah, uh, hold, hold that thought. Hold, 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 hold. Can, can we keep adopted in the title? <laughs> I'll tell you what, she's not like a sister to me. I'm gonna tell you some. All right, who's more likely to win a middle school fist fight? Harry Potter. I mean, he does. I mean, this is interesting because they do have like yeah. a duel, yeah. and Harry. Pounds of Harry him. wins the duel. <laughs> yeah. But we're not talking about a wizard's duel. We're talking oh. about a middle school fist fight. Yeah, but we know that Do they Malfoy's have a, fist a fight? putz. You know what I mean? The only fist fight is when Hermione socks Malfoy in the face. Ah, uh, that's true. We know he can't take a punch. No. Like, I think Harry's got My this. father will hear of this. Harry's, yeah. like, falling off of broomsticks and getting hit yeah. by the Whomping Willow. Harry can take a he hit. He can take a lot of hits. Take, yeah, he takes a ton of hits yeah. throughout the Harry Potter. When he was saga. a baby. Yeah, yeah, he took a he took a he took a <laughs> crush yeah. as a newborn. He took that hit so well, he kept a a piece of the assailant's soul within him. <laughs> I'm, pretty sure that's all, I'm pretty sure that's all propaganda. I'm pretty sure Lily Potter literally just cracked him on his head, and she blamed Dang. it on Voldemort. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> they were just like super inept parents. <laughs> Voldemort was actually like child protective services. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to save him. Oh. Ooh. Wow, this was an easy round. That was. Well, I mean, in this case, it's like, you know, unless it was like who could make a cunning plan. You know what I mean? It's just, well, maybe Harry, Harry could still, still do it. Yeah. yeah. He's he's one of those protagonists who's like maybe a little too good at everything. Yeah, like we would have had to have like a really Batman negative or, something yeah. like who's more likely to like if we had based one of these prompts off of the movie Dirty Works, then like maybe oh, Draco would have had like something. Who's more likely to fail at putting fish in a, a cartel's heart household? <laughs> Draco Malfoy. Draco Malfoy. He would fail it. Well, now we have magic against magic, but very different kinds of magic. Wand versus ring. Will magic. And it's not Lord of the Rings. That would have been a lot cooler. He has to charge the ring too. That sucks. Really? Yeah. yeah he's got a, like it's got a USB C. Uh, well, okay, all right. A USB C three. I'm pretty sure that two of them have to charge it. One of them doesn't. Kyle Gardner. I don't think he has to charge it. He literally is the embodiment of what this. Is Kyle move? John No yeah. H Stewart. Uh, he's also Does he have to charge, charge his ring? Yeah, charge <laughs> Chump. Chump. <laughs> don't be racist. Frank. Stop picking on John uh, Stewart. Well, so, I don't think uh, <laughs> Chump is a, a racial term. Obviously. I think anybody can be a Chump. You don't know where that term came from, obviously. <laughs> I don't, actually. All right. After you Google gay Baba Duke, go ahead and get origins of Chump. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Uh, I, I guess this is the championship round, the title uh, fight. Uh, ding, ding. Who is most likely to escape a shed slash prison from their serial killer captor? Oh. Well, someone with a lot of willpower, probably, but or someone with a lot of magic could too. This is this is a little bit complicated because I feel like both of these characters could do it pretty easily. Yeah, like, I mean, and also, what's the, what is the scenario like? They've been captured, and has the serial killer taken everything? Like, does Green Lantern have his ring? Can Harry Potter do magic without a wand? No. Okay. Wizards can do magic without wand, except when it's nece- uh, necessary to the plot. Right. True. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, here's the thing. Both of them need their, uh, their essential item. Yeah, yeah the MacGuffin. Need- yeah. And then they both have support teams, I'm assuming, right? Like, yeah. I'm sure somebody supports the, the Green Lantern. The other Green Lantern. The other I Green guess. Lanterns. Yeah. And the so Justice he's League. just, they're, they're both equally as likely to like be rescued by their friends. Yeah. Probably, yeah. Uh, one's power is based off of willpower. So if they lost the willpower to live any further, they'd yeah. probably not be able to bust out of that B. Whereas I think in Harry Potter, some of it is like, it's a bit of like X-Men rules. It's like anger can let the power come out. Cause yeah. remember in, uh, was the first movie when Dudley's like banging on the, Oh yeah. He was he doing magic. He didn't even need a wand. wand. Yeah. yeah. Also I'm saying they say that, Oh, you can't do magic without a wand except when, you know, they, <laughs> when it's convenient, when they write it into the plot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but he could Which, like, break through something. And it's, and it's funny. Cause like in the first movies, you think it's cause he's like the chosen one, but then it ends up being hot Neville. Yeah, it's true. It's hot Neville. Who saw that coming? But 
Harry's essentially like a god at the end of the Deathly Hollows, right? God level magic, Dumbledore uh, tier magic. It's conf- really it's confusing. I mean, he's like an accomplished wizard. Yeah. Would you say he's Dumbledore tier? I think I would think that Dumbledore would beat him in a fight. Maybe sure. it's hard to say. He's older. And while we're on the subject, the Dom- Dumbledore is your gay icon. Leave the Baba Duck alone. <laughs> mm. But I don't think he reached that status yet. No. Baba Duke's just got Let's it. Let's be honest. I He's mean, got Baba that Duke itch. is way more gay than Dumbledore. <laughs> Did you, Frank, I thought you just watched this movie, dude. <laughs> Did you even watch this movie? Jeez. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> I'm going to be just like, my, my brain's going to be so occupied with this <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna rewatch. I'm gonna it. buy you a gay it's Baba Duke. I'm, I'm gonna pick you up tomorrow. I'm gonna look like. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna be like so tired. I'm gonna have bags You're under gonna my look eyes. like the Baba Duke. It's yeah, all dude. I can think about. Uh, and then uh, oh, I was gonna say I'm also assuming you guys are gonna have to fill in on the Green Lantern stuff because I don't know. I mean, I don't um, know either. Yeah, I just saw Justice League as a child. I, yeah, I only know I Green Lantern there. from Injustice: Gods Among Us. You know what I mean? Cool, cool. Because uh, okay. cool. it's Mortal Kombat engine. Pretty dope. What are you gonna do? Um, but, uh, I'm assuming Harry Potter's cap tour would have this, would this, have magic, the shed would right? be like charmed yeah. in a way. You know what I mean? Oh, there would be like magic to be able to even hold them in the in. first place. Uh, I don't know. This is tough. I man. feel like with Art- the green lantern, there would be more situations that they don't know the true extent of his power versus like, um, another wizard, a rival wizard holding Oh, you know what? Okay, so I think okay. I got it here. Like, okay. I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna use Danny's argument as a jump off point. Okay. So, not learning anything about Green Lantern, if he's lost his ring and he's lost his willpower, because we're assuming they've just been playing dirty work on a loop inside the shed. <laughs> um, wow. Then he's just like a man, right? Because yeah. he's not the Green Lantern until they bestow. He's before they bestow him with the ring. He's just like a good man, right? Well, they have to be men of like high valor and like high willpower. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like literally so headstrong that they will not accept. No. And, and John Stewart, strong. They'll take you on. Yeah. Headstrong. They'll, they'll take on anyone. He's also, he's got and that they're classic not where they belong. <laughs> upside down triangle body shape. Like he's pretty yeah. built. You okay. I mean? John Stewart. Yeah. John Stewart's yeah. the biggest of them all. Like, yeah, he's stacked. He's pretty stacked. He, he looks like my old neighbor. Rick, he is who, a professional football player. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Oh, Danny knows a lot more about Green Lantern than I thought. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, so that being said, it's just like a big football player in a shed. Harry Potter stripped of his like a uh, wand and stuff. Yeah, we've already. He's uh, very twink like. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Yeah, um, that's obviously what Someone I was. Someone call at him Danny. a gay icon. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's a gay icon. <laughs> Greg Abbott, gay icon. Oh, <laughs> oh man, Ooh, can we make Greg yeah, Abbott let's start a up. gay icon? Wow, you heard that, it here I first. feel like. He might wheel himself off a cliff if we hit this hard enough. Wow. It's all about representation. He's going to oh. Mac and me himself? Yeah, dude. I'll totally get the <laughs> Mac and me. <laughs> Play that clip on Conan. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've already established that Harry Potter, when the time comes down to it with enough frustration and desperation, he can do magic. Yeah. So he'll MacGyver his way and, out there with yeah. magic? I mean, J.K. Rowling will write him out of that situation. <laughs> True. She'll hate on some trans people and then she'll be like, let me get my boy out of the situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we don't think that John Stewart would be able to like willpower and buff his way out of I think something. he'd be less likely to. Hmm. Are you I would I would argue that Harry Potter has more cunning. Yeah. Might be able to figure out a way. And I think it comes down to this. You strip them both of all of their magical clothes. items and clothes. Yeah. Harry Potter is still the only one who's able to access his power in some way. Where Green Lantern can't oh. will his ring's power into effect without oh, the ring there. Know, unless, unless, unless that happens. He's got some a second one stashed up in his prison wallet. Yeah. He took the ring <laughs> and shoved it <laughs> up his ass. <laughs> So the serial killer wouldn't find it. It's a terrible walk. I'm sorry, guys. We needed David here for this episode. It, it, does he need the ring? It's not any better than any of my other impressions. John, sure. John Stewart finally ascends. So you're performing at the caliber we expected. As the yeah. DC's most powerful Green Lantern. Oh. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Does he need his ring, though? Does he need his ring? I mean, isn't that the whole thing <gasps> about the Green Lantern? While Hal Jordan and his unique Green Lantern power ring may be special, he no longer holds a candle to Jon Stewart, who no longer needs a ring at all, oh, being, le- being cosmically powered straight from the lantern source. Yo, that being Game said, over. we got to give it to Jon Stewart. Game, Shoot. set, match, man. Shoot. Game, set, match right there. 
Wow. wow, we're learning so much about the Green Lantern, and we hope you guys are too. You never thought he could do better than the Daily Show, and then he ke- keeps hitting it hard afterwards, and now peeps and predicts chance- <sighs> champion. There's nothing this tiny, small wow. Jew could do. <laughs> it's a hard J you're hitting him. <laughs> you heard it here. Here's what he is. John Stewart is our new peeps and predicts. Not that well, there's our, anything our wrong with that. Champion. <laughs> is there anything wrong with that at all? Not not new, but con- he's the still the reigning champion. He's, yeah. he's retained his Oh, belt. Green Lantern, yeah. Yeah. He's retained his belt and his ring, although he Darn. doesn't need it. He's already made it around. Yep. Wow. Okay. Huh. So John Stewart ascends and continues to ascend to the top of the PNP mountain. Sorry, Harry. You're a loser, Harry. Yeah, Sorry. You wouldn't make it out. You need that wand, bud. I was hoping for you, Daniel Radcliffe. Wow. Well, that's our Mother's Day episode. We hope you enjoyed it. Check us out further on youtube check out all our other episodes we got some really great ones coming up as well like share and subscribe yeah share us with your friends share a story on instagram at uninformed movie reviews check us out on the facebook if you're still on that with your grandma and grandpa they're all in there too <laughs> if you're listening to this the day it comes out what the f- are you doing call your mom Take yeah. her out to brunch or something. It's Mother's Day, y'all. Unless be you're sure dead. To call her. Sorry about that. Uh, don't try and buy flowers today because it's going to be awful and your mom's going to hate whatever you get her anyway. So get chocolate. Chocolate's always a safe bet, I think. Yeah. Unless your mom's diabetic, then get her diabetic chocolate. Diabetic uh, chocolate. Because <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> oh, God. Let's end this episode. <laughs>